All right, inappropriate Earl back. Been a big couple weeks. You know, last week we had uh, Moan Red on. He was a killer. Two hour music podcast. Week before that, Theo Fleury, legendary Hall of Famer in the NHL, uh, talking about uh, you know his uh, situation that happened in junior hockey, and uh, probably the most serious uh, episode ever. And uh, you know, it's kind of neat to have a NHL Hall of Famer. And to show him some hockey jerseys that he grabbed onto in fights. Uh, you don't get to do that every day. But today we have a very special guest. She's a comic, a one of the prime roast battle battlers. And, uh, you know, she is... Uh, and I told her before that this... I might say things that come across as... Uh, <laughs> Uh, whatever, but inappropriate. She is, it is yeah, inappropriate. So this is yeah, it's, it's fitting. But she is the Caitlyn Jenner of uh, <laughs> L.A., Orange County, and Long Beach comedy. Uh, yeah. Please, because uh, I'm a bad driver. Well, no. Well, oh, okay. Well, I, you know, we're not even getting into the Asian side of you, <laughs> but uh, Robin Tran is in the house. Thank you. It's hard to top an NHL Hall of Famer, but uh, now you have Robin on your show, so. Thanks for having me, Earl. I'm a big fan. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think we met. I think I might have met you once when you were a, uh, a man. Did you meet me? I don't think you did. I think I did once in Orange County. Oh, really? Uh, but now you are a woman. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I said, this is called Inappropriate Earl. So I'm, tr- <laughs> I'm not. Any question I ask you in the next hour. Yeah. Please know it's out of my own uh, naivete and uh, lack of knowledge. Oh, well, Earl, I told you specifically no transgender questions. So. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so uh, I guess well, it's over. No, that's go been ahead. Robin Tran. Uh, <laughs> next week, join us for uh, Mark, Mar- Marcy Free, the singer from King Cobra, <laughs> who, I, you know, was the OG Caitlyn Jenner. Yeah. But uh, so, like, w- what is the process? Uh, where are you in the... Are, are you finished with the change or... That, that's actually that's actually one of the best questions I've been asked so far. The way you were you yeah you are a lot um, more astute than you give yourself credit for. Um, I am uh, further along my transition than I ever thought I would be. Actually, like uh, I came out on the internet. Um, I I, I um, Facebook messaged my girlfriend and said, "Hey, I'm a woman." That's how I came out to her. And then I, I wrote a Facebook status coming out. And then I was like, "Well, I, if that's all I ever do, because um, I'm kind of a." I'm kind of a chicken shit in a lot of ways. Then, um, like, I, I was, I was, af- I was afraid that, like, of of dressing up like a woman in public. So when I first went to go clothes shopping for uh, women's clothing, I was really hoping I wouldn't like it. I was hoping it was a phase, you know. Um, so I'm further along now than I ever thought I would be. I'm growing out my hair. I'm trying to grow out my hair a lot longer, um, but. As far as my transition goes, I feel like there's a lot of pressure um, that other trans people put on me or other non-trans people put on me. Like, what about hormones? What about this and that? And I'm sick of people telling me what to do. So, like, reflexively, I just want to tell them all to fucking leave me alone and I'll figure it out on my own. Right. So you still, I guess, in the in the, the most, uh, try for me, appropriate way of asking this question, you still have male parts. Yeah. Okay. I still got a, I got still got a dick. Well, I guess that's the question I was trying to get. Uh, yeah. I talk about it at the roast battle a lot. I don't know if I'm going to get rid of the dick because then I'll, I'll lose a lot of roast battle jokes, you know? Right. Some, well, some things are more important than transitioning. Well, no, like, yeah. Well, to me they are. But I mean, uh, so like um, when you uh, have uh, relations with your girlfriend, like don't, don't, doesn't that get in the way? Um. So when I have relations with my girlfriend, uh, without getting into too much detail, oh yeah, I'm not. I, like, I um, I I I never really like to use it, but even before my transition, it, it was really weird. Like I um, I'm gonna get kind of graphic. L- listen, whatever. It's um. I think we're gonna talk about wrestling later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I'm talking I, about wrestling with my emotions right now. Right. But, I'm um, wrestling with my sexuality <laughs> myself, as Olivia would say. <laughs> no, you know, I, I I talk about it in my stand up, um, and I have a joke about it, but it's true. Like I, the way I I masturbated before never made sense to me. Like I would, um, I never liked to see it. I I would like put like tissue paper in between, 
like, and I would just kind of rub it. I have a very small penis. So I would just rub it like a clit, <laughs> which is, Ooh. so, so that's, that's how I always jerked off. And then, so when I came out, I'm like, oh, it makes so much sense now. It's almost like, I don't know a lot about biology and stuff, but it almost feels like. I think you do. When I was born. Yeah. I don't think, think these are the medical terms and rubbing my dick like a clit. I don't think you can find that in a book or anything, but no, I think I was, it feels like it wasn't fully formed or something. You know, and I was always ashamed of the size of it. And I thought it was just my race or whatever. Um, you know, the stereotype Asians have small penises Black or whatever. Guys have big ones. Yeah. Uh, um, but I, 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 I tried having, um, um, you know, vaginal intercourse for a while and I just never really liked, woman. yeah, with a woman. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I didn't know if you like tucked your, like your, no, your it, thing in. And no, then, no, 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 no. I, I tried to use my dick to... Um, put it into a vagina. This is how gotcha. how not good I am at sex to put it into a vagina. <laughs> and I just didn't like the way it felt. I think I didn't even know that I was uncircumcised. Like one time I was having sex and I never peeled it back because it was so sensitive. What's well, not a banana? <laughs> and it and it peeled back and I thought that she broke my dick. Oh, and I wow. and I started and I started screaming and crying and she's like, "This is the way a penis looks like." Oh, you know, um, maybe women. Uh, <laughs> maybe the transition was good for you. I think it was. I, I think now that I'm saying it all out loud, this sounds like a lot of dysphoria and dysmorphia that I uh, uh, I've been going through my whole life now. So so now when I have, I don't like to use it during sex. I kind of just like I like to kind of keep underwear on, right? right. And I and I let do stuff to me and then I just kind of masturbate. That's okay. kind of, that's how I've always liked to do it. I'm kind of conservative that way. So like, uh, like, uh, and, and once again, this is just my lack of knowledge on the subject. Uh, so are you, when people ask you about your sexuality, do you, you're gay with women or, or yeah. like, like, I, I, I mean, um, you can, you I, are a woman. I am considered a lesbian. Okay. Right. Yeah. I, I, uh, I feel like I am one. Um, but I have a lot of internalized, um, transphobia. So even when I say I'm a lesbian and I feel like I am one, I, I hesitate to say it out loud. Cause I know, I know what people think when they hear that, you know, they think like, yeah, but you got a dick. How can you be a lesbian? And the reason I know why they think that was because before I came out, I was extremely transphobic. I would refuse to call trans people by their genders. And, you know, it's kind of like how, you know, you hear about gay guys that are in the closet, so they hate gay people. I was kind of like that kind of person for a while. Like I was always into social justice and, and equal rights, but for whatever reason, anytime transgender people were brought up, I would get so mad, you know? So I still have the, I'm still trying to get rid of the internalized transphobia. Like I'm a lesbian, but I say it out loud. And uh, I said this on the, another podcast, like being transgender is really bad for audio. Basically <laughs> you can't really see that. I, I look like a woman and is everything. Is that the mean boys podcast? The mean boys yeah. podcast. That's what, yeah. That's when Great. I said uh, I like to plug their podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Connor McSpadden, Joe Dosh, Keith Carey. Yeah. I, I love, I love both your podcasts and I like, I thank you guys so much for having me on. Um, so yeah, I'm a lesbian. Okay. But yeah. it's, it, but it's weird for me to say that is what I'm trying to say. Well, I imagine uh, knowing the stand-up world like we all do uh, and how comics like to give each other shit, uh, that being uh, in your situation, uh, does it make you, um, sh- like, not uh, phobic about doing shows, but you, are, are you aware of, like, other comics looking at you going, oh, you know, it's a chick with a dick, blah, blah, blah. You know... Um, you know, actually, it's actually, um, I have, uh, the, the opposite kind of react. Like when I do shows now, it's weird. Cause like the comics themselves are like some of the coolest people in the world. Like they, they don't, if you're funny, they don't give a shit. Um, I, I have found though that, um, they don't really joke around with me as much anymore. The reason I love the mean boy so much, those three guys, uh, Connor, Keith and Joe was because they treat me the same before and they, they they used to make fun of me a lot they still make fun of me a lot but a lot of people that used to make fun of me is almost like they're too scared to and um so it's almost like they they're you know walking on eggshells around me right. i don't and i don't really i don't really like that i mean yeah you know don't go out and just be a piece of shit and say i don't you know i want you to die or whatever you know right. but um so i don't really mingle with uh, a lot of comics like I used to, I kind of just kind of hang out with my girlfriend and I go home now. I'm more phobic about the crowds in Orange County in particular. Like there's always, like if I perform at like an Irish bar, there's always some guy that is gawking at me 
and I always have to ask like a bigger comic to sit with me. Really? So that, oh yeah, it happens all the time. Yeah. Like you think they're gonna like? Because uh, there are a lot of uh, homophobic, transgendered phobic. Yeah. Phobic, not phobic. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> it's so fucking hot. Yeah. <laughs> slurring words. Yeah. Uh, is that a concern? Like, like after a show, someone would want to like beat the shit out of you. That's or? always a. It's always a concern for me. I don't know how legitimate it is i hear about it all the time you know transgender people get murdered a lot uh, no one's ever physically hurt me but i get stared at a lot angrily and really? some people some people do oh yeah i i'm shocked by the amount of stare i i knew that if, when i came out i would get stared at a lot i didn't know how frequently it would happen i came out at work uh, at my my old job and um what i thought was going to happen was people were going to were going to be like oh what what the fuck and then they were going to ask me some questions and in a couple of weeks they'd get over it but what i didn't expect was that like I, let's say over 100 employees every day they'd walk by my cubicle and they would just gawk at me like a zoo animal this happened every day for a month and i told human resources about it and they said well they're not breaking any rules there's no rules against staring um i guess that's true I mean. yeah and so it was a really hostile work environment people would like slam doors in my face and really point and laugh at me oh yeah and so i was like Oh, it was it was really uh, surprising to me because I always thought like I was I was always like kind of um being I was made fun of a lot for being Asian, but I was I was never like harassed at work. You know, I was like, oh, that only happens on TV or whatever. And, right. it, and it actually happened to me. I actually had to end up walking out on the job because like the harassment was so bad that I, I left and it kind of carried over. I think I'm kind of scared to do shows now because of it. Yeah, you mean more from the getting shit from the audience? Audience and yeah, people and, and comics who might not know you like comic it's yeah, a lot of the comics do know me and they uh by and large they support me and they like me. It's funny though, sometimes like there will be like a new open micer and they'll look at me and they'll start laughing and they'll start trying to make fun of me. Really? And then and then and then other comics that know me will come by and they'll give me hugs and then the new comics like, Oh, oh shit, and they just kinda walk away. <laughs> Well, you're fast, though. Like, <laughs> yeah. It, like, I, I remember the first time uh, I saw you at Roast Battle, and I think I had a line. Uh, I forget what I said. It was probably... I think you said, what are you doing after the show? I think I said a, uh, you know, because that role on the show I do is uh, <laughs> uh, borderline uh, racist, homophobic. Uh, it's a character... But uh, he's borderline with a uh, yeah. <laughs> parentheses. I'm like, wow, this, this dude's a hot looking chick or something. Yeah. You said something I wouldn't fuck you if I was either sex. It was, uh, yeah, I was like, oh wow, she's fast. Yeah, uh, Earl Earl actually said something that uh, I was really nervous about my first roast battle. You know, I I had always seen uh, I I loved your character. I didn't know it was a character. I wasn't sure. A lot of people don't. And um. And uh, I was like, I was scared of what Earl was going to say to me, but Earl actually gave me the biggest laugh I had all year, which was after uh, Moses comes up and he's like, this, we've had, we've had black comics, we've had Asian comics. Now we have a transgender comic and he's like hyping it up. And then Earl just goes, all right, let's bring this dude out here. I want to see <laughs> it just, it was like the biggest laugh I had all year. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be fine. Oh yeah. I mean, it's um, all done out of love. And, and it, it was really refreshing because I knew people wanted to make jokes about me. But I think they didn't have permission to laugh. So I, I, I did the roast battle to say, like, I don't like bad jokes about trans people, but I love good jokes about trans people. And it was almost like to give permission for people to know, like, hey, there's more nuance than that. You know, I, I don't like people saying you can't make fun of trans people at all. I don't like that. But I don't like a lot of the jokes that actually get on TV and on Twitter and stuff. Like, they're shitty jokes and they're, like, mean-spirited and stuff, you know? Yeah, I mean, but I like funny. <laughs> They're just me. But the clever ones are the best. Like Connor McSpadden told some of the funniest transgender jokes about me I've ever heard. You He's know? an animal. Yeah. When he said, um, there's a lot of places Rob May can't go now that she's transgender, like heaven. I was like, I almost I like I was almost like crying laughing. It was such a good joke. Um But you only take on like really good roasters. So yeah. Like, you know, like Connor and Ramsey. What's your record? I'm one in three, but you. I'm three and zero oh in losing good battles. I'm Chris Jericho. I'm like the I'm jobber to the stars, you know. Like if you want a a good battle that you'll eventually win in overtime, yeah, <laughs> you battle me, you know. You're gonna, yeah. But your last battle against uh, April, April, it was amazing. Oh, uh, thanks, man. Uh, it's like you, 
you girls were going fucking at it. But we couldn't top you and G- Joe Dosh. Well, that, that your, was... Your Triple H entrance and pedigreeing, and no one could top that shit. So I'm glad uh, we went before you. Well, I mean, uh, it was just... Uh, I have to do the wacky entrances because uh, my jokes are average at best. You know, I've heard you say that a few times now, and I think that's... Um, I know you're not fishing for compliments. I know you're not, really not absolutely. Not. I know you're being humble, but I think that you don't give yourself enough credit for how well written your jokes are. Well, I mean, I'm like Kiss. I hire a lot of outside writers. For you, the hits. Oh, do you really? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I get help, uh, but you know, like last night was probably the greatest main event ever. Uh, oh my God! Oh yeah, Keith and Pat with Keith Carey and Pat Barker. I mean, it was brutal. Like, but it was like triple overtime. Probably, I think thirteen, fourteen jokes done. Yeah, each one. There wasn't, uh, you know, so that's what uh, twenty six jokes combined. Total. Yeah. Maybe one that didn't kill. I mean, the, I've never seen a battle where every joke killed. Yeah, it was amazing. You know, that's actually what's going to keep me from being a great roast battler is that I I don't go for the meanest joke I can. I used to talk to my therapist about it. Like, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, I can't make fun of my friend's miscarriage. I'm such a pussy. Right. Like, I would talk to my... But I guess kind of like... You have to. I, I know you have to. And, and I, I kind of have this weird respect for people that do that because I, I don't have it in me to do that anymore well, i mean i think if you're going like keith and pat are friends i don't i don't know if they're great friends but they're good friends so uh like i, I i'm the, in your boat like you know i had a joke about keith's mom that was so mean and brutal i didn't say it because i like keith. yeah yeah like you know see i'm almost the opposite where if i was battling someone i didn't like i could say whatever i wanted no i you know i i am um, i can say more if i don't i don't battle people i don't like though yeah I, I but you know what's funny is that before my transition i would have probably said anything i was a much angrier person as robert i i used to tell people i wanted them to go kill themselves and shit all the time but i don't know i kind of mellowed out and uh i lost a little bit of my i guess edge for lack of a better term because of that Edge the wrestler? Yeah, Edge. Right. <laughs> but you're tough to battle because it's like once you take away, you know, your transformation jokes, it's like, what else you like? The Asian jokes kill against me, though. I would say some of them, the Asian jokes kind of kill harder than the transgender jokes. But yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, we all have weak spots, like roasting weak spots. Yeah. Being Asian isn't a weak spot. Well, no, I, I know. I, I saw what you were saying. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> we all have weak spots, you know, being transgender and yeah. Asian. Well, lesbian. I'm old, you know, yeah. uh, or, you know, it's the same thing, Earl. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, roast battle. It's I think Moses says it's uh, Jeff Ross says it best. Uh, if you have thick skin, get it. Get the fuck out. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, Pat Barker is miscarriage jokes. Oh, my God. Him. They're brutal. Uh, Olivia had jokes about uh, my parents. Uh, Olivia and Jesse Joyce both had jokes about my parents dying two months apart. Oh, my God. Uh, I had a rape joke about Olivia. You know, uh, if you're gay, you know, Joe Dosh just had every gay joke under the sun. Told, yeah. Uh, you know, Connor got molested. Yeah, you know, yeah. Keith's mom was in a gangbang. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's the craziest. I, We're it's all weird. Going to I, hell. I, I, you know, it's like, it's my favorite show. And I think that surprises some people because I'm a feminist blogger. Right. So it's like mortal enemies. But I, I love that show. I, I, you know, I'm a really sensitive person. I think I get my feelings hurt pretty easily. And I know that about myself. So it is a way of me to kind of like, Kind of not throw, you know, grow thicker skin, but I have to get used to people making fun of me because people on Twitter do all the time. So like might as well just kind of do it with love and or whatever. Well, those so, people are maniacs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, uh, I stopped looking at comments on YouTube. Oh, they're the worst. Oh, my God. They ruin my day all the time. You just can't. You yeah. Know? It's like I looked at some of my someone posted an old clip of my stand up from like a year ago, which is probably the best 20 minute set I've ever had. You know, second comment. This guy sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you should see my other videos. Yeah. You think that sucks. My first comment for like my favorite set was just, you look like a dude just right away. I'm like, yeah. oh my God. Like, did yeah. you even watch this thing? All right. Well. And then someone, you know, well, you know, by the fourth comment city N word, which has nothing to do <laughs> with anything. But yeah. It's your character from the roast yeah, battle. It's usually it's, me. It's a hater Earl but, comes in. Yeah. You know, it's like, so I stopped a long time ago. Like. <laughs> Uh, which is why I think I love roast battles so much because the feedback is so instant and it's yeah. in your like, 
you know, you don't have to go on YouTube. To, you, people tell you. Yeah. As soon as you do the joke, this is good, this is bad. It's a drug. It, like, it's, oh, yeah. It's my favorite show to do. And I'm, I don't know if I'm going to do one. You know, like six people have challenged me. But that's good. Like, and, and I've said no to all of them. It's just so emotionally draining for me. Like, who you said, you, can you say who they are? <laughs> well, one of them is Keith Carey. It's like, have Keith, you guys not battled? No, we haven't. We had a we had a little pre battle exchange. Okay. One night, um, he said like uh, someone called me um he, and then uh, everyone goes she. Even you, you're like she she. And then Keith said, uh, use the right pronouns. As in, this lady is a faggot. <laughs> and I I use one of my roast jokes I wrote about him. Uh, I burned it and I said, uh, after I get the sex change, neither of us will be able to see our penises. And that was our little exchange. That I've been trying be... to write jokes about him, but Keith is like, he's battled, what, 14, 15 times now? See, that's the problem. With and I, I can't, like, I don't know if I can battle him because he's, he's like so much better than I am right now. So I don't know. I mean, anyone can be beat. You know, that's the great thing about roast battles. You have one bad, you know... Uh, you know, anyone can have an off night. You yeah. Know? I mean, it, you know, what not, what uh, are you in the rankings? Like I, the, my last battle with April, my, my third loss in a row got me kicked out of the rankings. Really? You're yeah. unranked. Yeah. I was ranked. I was at 44. Um, but then I think three losses in a row got me kicked out of the rank. But then, you know, I got like other shit because of that battle. So that's, Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's the, I've gotten booked on great shows. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, I'd like to see you battle Mark Stevens. I can't. Battle. You're a woman. <laughs> he likes taking I, he, on women. Oh, I don't want him to kiss me on the cheek after the battle. He probably will. That guy's <laughs> probably the horniest guy I've ever met. You know? He does every time he's kids. Like, what? What are you doing, dude? I've done comedy for 16 years. I've been around a lot of horny people. He's, yeah, he's definitely. He's yeah. like the Louis C.K. joke. There's this cum, cum coming out of his eyeball. You know, just oh, there's always. Well, Hades the horniest guy I've ever met. Oh, is he? I mean, oh my God, that guy is like just leers at women like. <laughs> Like he's not even like I hide it when I'm looking at a girl. Like, oh, she's cute. And yeah, Haiti just stares at them like RoboCop. Just like, <laughs> like it's the creepiest thing. Uh, Leering is such a good word. It's a creepy well, description. It's exactly like I mean, who was I talking to uh, last night in the hallway? Page and uh, this uh, front manager at the Improv who loves roast. That's the thing about roast battle. It people from other clubs come. To watch yeah, it, yeah, like, which is rare. Like, I don't think Adam goes to the improv to watch too many shows there or the Laugh Act. No one goes to the Laugh Factory or Flappers. <laughs> I ban myself from Flappers. <laughs> you know, I love how Flappers sends you like a 10 page <laughs> fucking agreement to do some shitty show, and then at the bottom of the last page, it's like no compensation. It's yeah. Like, Sign this contract where you won't get paid. Yeah. I mean, I could understand if you're getting paid like $500. All right. You got to, you know, they're nice enough to pay you, you know? yeah but uh it's like that's a waste of email yeah and by the way while i bring up flappers this is breaking news in the world of la comedy on twitter uh one i am not stand up batman and now we have a new uh, account out stand up robin uh oh, that's am, not me that's not me no i know no no it's <laughs> not but i mean uh Stand Up Robin is, uh, a, I think, a new account within the last couple days, and uh, their first tweet was to Stand Up Batman that they are here to help him or her. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> really? Yeah. So, do, I, do they pick fights with flappers? Is that why you're saying this? No, I just it just came in. You know, we're talking about yeah, Twitter. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, everyone thinks that I'm Stand Up Batman. Well, you're already a character on Twitter. That wouldn't even yeah, make sense. Yeah, attention LA comics. Yeah. You know, I, I use my name. You palming fucks. Yeah. The comics are the worst. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, all fake. What is a palm, palming? I think I looked it up on Urban Dictionary. That's like sucking dick, right? Um. Well. But are you saying it like palming because they put their palms they, out? You know, hey, what's happening? Nice set, Earl. Uh, I just got here. I didn't even go up yet. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I've actually... Uh, I guess I can say his name because yeah, I was, you know, I used to open up for Rob Schneider, you know, and his brother, uh, John, was his manager. I, I don't think he is anymore. And so I'm opening up for Rob at the Canyon Club. There's one entrance into the Canyon Club. And from the stage, you can see it. Uh, just as I'm bringing Rob up, I see John walk in. So he was not there for my set. And he just comes up to me, shakes my hand and goes, great set. I love the closer. I'm like, and I didn't tell him, but I'm like, dude, I just saw you walk in. 
<laughs> so that's a Palmer. Uh, now that's a high level Palmer. Yeah. Uh, but then, at, especially at roast battle, you, you get a lot of palms. Uh, you know. Uh, you know, I, this is kind of not the same story. But at one time, um, an, an Asian comic had just finished his set. He had glasses on, and he, and he got off stage. And then a, a woman walked up to me, and she said, "Hey, that was that was really funny." <laughs> She thought that I had just gone up and it was this Asian dude. I get that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with Ari Shafir, when we used to, uh, we had used to have like Jew froze, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. I uh, would sometimes be on the same lineups. And sometimes it's, when I wasn't past at the store, he was going on and I was just hanging out. And people would come up to me and go, hey, great set. <laughs> or when he did that character, The Amazing Racist. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember YouTube, that. Uh, people would come up to me on the street and go, hey, man, I love those YouTube sketches. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. like, Watch that, me be racist on Tuesday. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, who knew that I really would turn into the amazing racist, but... Uh, you know, I'm afraid of the palming stuff because, like, you know, when um when it, the good news came out that the, the roast battle got on Comedy Central, I always message people to tell them, hey, you know, congratulations. And I avoided messaging you or Brian or... Because I knew that you guys probably had a bunch of messages in your inbox from people like it's it sucks because like i'm i'm a i'm a legitimate fan of a lot of people so i come off as like very e i'm very eager to tell people but that's not palming like if you were to get uh like when the commercial for roast battle airs and your part will be in it when you break the well i don't want to break the fourth wall and yeah. tell people it wasn't a real class but <laughs> well, i guess i just did but uh like you know i'll message you say hey you looked great on the you know i mean you're gonna be in a commercial on national yeah, tv thanks. thanks man uh Palming would be, um, you know, someone who doesn't know you, uh, who never talked to you once before, you know, hey, great job on the commercial. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. You know, so. Like, they think that they, you can get something for them, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, Roast Battle is going to be a big show for Comedy Central. I think it's going to be huge. It's, uh, I didn't, uh, you know, this show's had so many ups and downs and, you know, ebbs and flows where you're like, okay, you know. Uh, it's maybe reached its you know course, but and then it just keeps going because the battles are great. Yeah, you know, I um, you've been doing comedy for a long time, right? Sixteen years. Sixteen years. Yeah, that's jungle. Um, it's very inspiring because you're so quick, and and I'm I, I'm a I think I'm a good writer, like a really good writer, but I'm not as quick as you are. Like one time, I remember you looked at the stage and you said, "This looks like a bus stop." Remember, yeah, it was like I think it was, it was two. It was three black com. It was, yeah. was two uh, black roasters and Moses. Yeah, and you say, this looks like a bus stop. I think it, it was, was like, Darren Davis. Yeah, <laughs> who is b b so black he makes Moses look white. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen someone with that skin hue. Yeah, uh, and then I forget who the other one. Maybe uh, I don't remember. When, who yeah, when there's three people up there and you have a perfect like one time it was um two women and Brian Moses and you said this looks like the the waiting room of a Planned Parenthood. Yeah. Like, I'm like, well, God damn, how, how are you so quick? You know, it's so it's hacky, you know, cause it's like, I don't like to take shots at the roasters cause they have enough to worry about. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, so I like to just maybe do, Hey, this stage looks like, you know, whatever. Is it hacky though? I mean, isn't all, to aren't, degree. aren't all roast jokes hacky then by, by that standard, you know? But I mean, like, like when I used to have partners at the haters table, uh, and I think they just cut it, back to me because just there's too many voices in the room uh you know certain uh partners would more attack not attack but roast the roasters gotcha uh and i don't like doing that because i you know i don't like when it's done to me like uh you know i'm trying to battle you or, or keith or you know jesse joyce so i i don't really want to have to worry about okay now i gotta have one for this person but it usually works out. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like a bear. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Why? Why are you don't like a, poke the bear? You don't poke the bear. Uh, but then I end up usually forgetting about whoever I'm roasting and just roasting the room. Yeah. <laughs> so, because I have to. You yeah, know. you're a great heel. I well, it's totally done. Like I am. Uh, let me show you a pair of pants I'm buying. Uh, you know, uh, for the. Uh, let me uh, hold on here. Uh, He's showing me a picture of his penis right I'm now. I'm sure. Oh, well, I <laughs> probably should. Because, no, no, no. no. Uh, I have showed everyone that picture. No, that's, that's okay, Earl. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't like to look at my own. So right. it's... Trust me, you would if you saw this picture. Uh, <laughs> 
No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, hold on. Let me. Here we go. These now. Right now, there are a pair. If I go to uh, Montreal as a roaster for Comedy Central, you know, it's a lot of things in the air that aren't uh, uh, up for discussion right now at this juncture. Yeah. Uh, I will be going as a writer, but if I'm lucky enough to be a performer, uh, there are a pair of Rick Rude stage wa- ring worn uh, tights on eBay right now for fourteen hundred dollars. <laughs> what? Uh, and these are, <laughs> that's the, dir- that's the dirtiest thing I've ever, they, they $1,400. Didn't... They let them wear that in the nineties in the early nineties. Yeah. And I just, I already have emailed, uh, certain executives going, I'm not paying $1,400 for these, get them. And then have you guys say, <laughs> you can't wear that on TV. <laughs> so, uh, but it is. You, you remember when he had um, Jake the Snake Robert's yeah, wife Cheryl. on his thigh? Oh, my God. Um, so, uh, but I have to... Uh, That's a great Earl. Well, I mean, you know, Montreal, the format is going to be 16, the best of the best. Yeah. Like, is from Earl, all over the world. Is Earl Hebner going to referee in Montreal? I hope so. <laughs> I really want to get a custom... Uh, if I do get to go uh, roast, because um, I think a lot of people are... Uh, under the wrong assumption that if you won your, you know, there's, there was the road to roast battle, uh, LA, Austin, Chicago, New York, uh, you know, even if you won your battle, you, you're not guaranteed a spot, you know, there's, you know, wild card selections and whatnot, but, uh, I might get a pair of custom tights that say Montreal screw job. Oh, uh, that's so funny. You know, cause Montreal's a wrestling, uh, yeah. that's like probably the number one, uh, canadian wrestling city like in terms of the fans and like whenever they have a show in montreal it's always hot yeah uh so this might be a good segue to get in yeah you, you pull an hbk you know put out a, a canadian flag and just hump it in front of it well i did that last <laughs> year uh it did not work well oh uh, did you really do that but there there's so um uh, montreal is probably the number one hockey city in the world um you know, just for today, breaking news for you. Uh, and this uh, podcast will be out tomorrow. But uh, PK Subban, who eerily looks a lot like Brian Moses, the host of Roast <laughs> Battle, uh, <laughs> he has been traded to the Nashville Predators for uh, the great Shea Weber. Uh, and uh, I mean, look at it. And it, I mean, this is literally this trade just happened. So this is breaking news. Let me do the Gary Mule there. He looks just like him. Let me do the Gary Mule there. Hit the fake typewriter. <laughs> breaking news. Dateline Montreal. <laughs> uh, you know, in the seventies when you had breaking news, they do the typewriter noise. Uh, uh, <laughs> so I thought last year I was. This was at the time when I was doing the haters table with Whitney Rice. And, uh, you know, she's a very, very funny comic, uh, you know, about nine months into doing the house racist character. I was like, hey, I'm running out of things to say, Moses. I think I'm going to quit. Uh, not because I didn't like the show. I just, you know, it's a, it's a tough it's part a really, of the show. Yeah, it looks really hard. Um, it's brutal. Uh, and feel free to, you know, I know they don't want me to have partners anymore, but I, I would like to make a one-time exemption for you to sit at the <laughs> I don't think I'd be good at it, but, but I you never know. it. I appreciate uh, it. But I was like, hey, man, I, I, I just, I'm running out of things to say. I, I just, uh, you know, I'm struggling. And he's like, well, why don't you get a partner? And I thought, why don't I get a girl partner? Uh, because it'll soften the blow of the crazy things I'm saying. And, you know, she was great. And so, and because she's beautiful and she's really funny. And uh, so we go to Montreal and I thought the first show, hey, let's just go all in. I'm going to wear a Toronto Maple Leafs jersey. <laughs> you wear the Canadians jersey and they'll fucking love you and they'll hate me, but they'll get the character. Yeah. They hated me. Oh, no, like, really? She walked out on, uh, wearing a game worn George LaRock jersey. Now, George LaRock also looks like Brian Moses. He's black. <laughs> Canadians love getting black players, which is ironic because it's like the most racist city in Canada. <laughs> I mean, last year. Wayne Simmons, a black player from the Philadelphia Flyers, was on a breakaway, and someone threw a banana. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, so it's Montreal's a real deal. I mean, it's it's a beautiful city. It's a great comedy city. Uh, you can't... Uh, there's not a city in Canada that wouldn't be more accepting of roast battle, especially my character, uh, than Montreal, but... Uh, so they love it's almost ironic that they seem to try and acquire black players uh, 
and I'm wearing a Maple Leafs jersey, and it literally Toronto and Montreal are like the Bloods and the Crips. Yeah, they it's just they hated me. Like literally, they wouldn't laugh at one thing I said. Oh my god! So your heel character was too good. Uh, yeah, and, and Whitney was killing everything she was saying. Thank God, because uh, uh, I, I did so bad that first night. I was looking up flights to go home. Oh, my like, God, that sucks, man. I was like, fuck. What That's did I, brutal. What did I do wrong? I thought, you know, they're going to get I'm not actually a fucking Maple Leafs fan. Yeah. Uh, but it worked out. Thanks the, to, uh, the loudest I've ever heard the Rocket booed. Remember, he did a, a, a promo in Toronto. He did a rhyme. Right. Um, quicker than a bull, faster than a buck. The best thing to come to whatever, because the maple leaves suck. It was it was the biggest. It was the loudest oh, yeah. amount of booze, and then he starts clapping at himself and stuff. Yeah, Canadians love their hockey. Well, I mean, I don't think in America we have a sport that. I mean, football's loved, but I don't think people, uh, you know, uh, live or die in terms of if the Steelers win. And, yeah. Uh, or. Uh, I think there's a bee in the house. Hold on. Uh, we're going to, but. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, no, I, I'll get it. Uh, I might have to have you, uh, I might have to ask you a long-winded question right now. Oh, okay. But. Uh, <laughs> I'm good at being long-winded. No, no. So uh, what got you into wrestling? Because, uh, you know, obviously you got into wrestling while you were a, a man. Yeah. And has your love of wrestling changed? Since you're a woman, I mean, because I, I would say that uh, I mean wrestling definitely has uh, female fans. Yeah, but I, I would say I, maybe seventy percent are dudes. Yeah, I, I think that's changing. But um, uh, what got me into wrestling? I was um, I think I was around four years old, and my parents were uh, they were watching wrestling, and I wasn't really sure what was going on, but it was a tag team match, and one of the, one of the uh, tag team partners. I'm also watching Earl, K Earl kill a B right now. <laughs> Earl versus the B is the best match happening right now. And, um, the partner, one of the tag team partners, he hits his partner after they lose a match. And I was like, Oh my God, I didn't know that, um, athletes were allowed to do that. And then, um, he, um, he punches the referee. And I remember I was so like enthralled by that. Cause I never really understood real sports. Like nothing really ever happened, you know? Um, but now I'm watching, uh, I'm watching this and I, I don't know wrestling is not real. So I'm asking my parents, like, is that referee? Okay. Is he going to go to jail? And, and it was, um, it was such a, um, dramatic thing that happened in sports and it made me love sports entertainment because of it. I don't know. Was that a good long winded answer? Oh, no, I'm going to ask you another question. Cause I got, I got a corner of this guy. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm phobic of bees to be, be are, are you, serious. are you, are you all right? Oh no, I'm cool. I like we, you know, I just, uh, you know, I'm cool. I just got to corner him down. It's a lot like Haiti tracking down a girl on the patio of the comedy <laughs> store. You just got to be cool because uh, it was so hot. I think I left the window open upstairs. And uh, I'm, I'm also scared to be some. No, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. Don't worry. I got a. I'm gonna go get a bigger towel because I, I don't know if this is big enough. But uh, well, yeah. I mean, when I got into wrestling, like. See, I got, how old are you, if you don't mind? Or, I'm, I'm 30, I'm 30. I'm 47, so, you know, when I grew up, I, I, I literally thought it was real. Yeah. Because like, there was no internet. So, like, you know, you see my lovely reading I have for the guests. I've Kamala, Kamala Speaks. Speaks, yeah. Which, I don't get any money for this. Uh, if you go to KamalaSpeaks.com, it's like 20 bucks. Kamala autographs it. He, all the money goes towards his diabetes uh, situation. He has no legs. Uh, which is crazy. I mean, I, I know that uh, the WWE is going to induct him and Lex Luger into the Hall of Fame together, and they're they're going to force him to do a ladder match. Uh, <laughs> they're so. going to put Lex Luger and Elizabeth together. Oh <laughs> Lex Luger's like looking rough. I mean, <laughs> he used to be that male poster boy, like human. I don't know if I would say heterosexuality, <laughs> but he had a great body. Yeah, he did, and he was like the head of the the. Was it the W? The World, World Wild Bodybuilder Federation. Yeah, I, I mean, which was Vince McMahon's failed attempt at going after Joe Weider's empire. Joe Weider's like, you know, muscle, muscle and fitness guy. Mr. Olympia. Yeah. Uh, and Matt, man, he, there was a picture of him and Sting recently that it was like, Sting looks pretty good for 56. I mean, yeah. I don't know if he should be taking buckle bombs <laughs> or whatever they call that move. Yeah. Uh, it was the Seth Rollins power bomb on the turnbuckle. Well, right? The first one he kind of took it, but you could tell like, oh boy, maybe they shouldn't do a second one. And yeah. Then, oh my god. So, like when I knew wrestling, like there was no internet. 
So if Kamala was billed as being from Africa, you you believed it. Yeah. Because it was like, oh, wow, it's crazy. How did Vince McMahon get this guy from Africa? But, you know, I guess for someone who's 30, like when you got into it, you knew, did you know it was? No, no. Actually, I thought wrestling was real until I was like, 12 or 13. I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a naive person. I actually thought that Santa Claus was real until I was like eight or nine. And I thought the tooth fairy was real until I was like 11 or 12. So I thought that different things were real until a certain age. And it wasn't until like NBC did that stupid special, the um, pro wrestling's biggest secrets exposed. <laughs> Earl, is, Earl is stomping the shit out of a bee right now. This is not a work. This is a shoot. <laughs> Are you right? No, no, I'm good. I'm gonna throw this towel out. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I fully kill this person. All right. Uh, but so yeah, keep going. Is, yeah, he's throwing away a towel, much like Survivor Series 1994. <laughs> Earl has left the apartment to throw away this bee. Oh my god, I'm by myself in his apartment. <laughs> um, uh, to answer your question, Earl, I guess I'll just pretend he's still here. Um, no, I, it was the NBC special pro wrestling's biggest secrets revealed. And I was, uh, it was during the attitude era and I thought wrestling was real until 1998, which means that all that shit that happened, uh, with the undertaker and Kane, I actually thought undertaker was a dead guy. And I would argue with my classmates that the undertaker is a real dead guy. <laughs> and, um, I, I remember I was in eighth grade and I was like, no, undertaker pulled diesel to hell. It was a cage match against Bret Hart and he, came underneath the ring and, you, and everyone was like it's no it's fake and i would cry and i would yell at them so no i thought wrestling was real for a long time dude well it, sounds... it, bro it broke my heart when i found out it was fake oh i mean it did me and by the way they uh, i have successfully this is a big fucking b it had like i think it was a mutation because there's like oh my a God. second b like either that or the stinger was big and i don't yeah. mean steve borden but like <laughs> uh it is funny that like you here I mentioned Sting's name and their B comes into the that's room. That's right. It was fitting, yeah. So I, that's the first, uh, I think this is the 126th, 127th episode. I've never left my apartment and kept the podcast going, so. <laughs> yeah, I did a good job, Earl. I, no, I appreciate that because I... I was I'm, doing a reference to Survivor Series when Owen Hart had the mom throw in the towel to <laughs> Bret Hart. <laughs> He's doing really obscure wrestling references to impress you. But I love it uh, because... Uh, but I was a WCW guy. I know. Uh, I know. I mean, I was a WWE guy when, you know, when they had Kamala and Hogan, the Warrior. But in the 90s, uh, I just... I don't know. I really even, the, even during the NWO shit, you were into WCW more? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just... Because I was... Uh, I love Flair. I love Hogan. Macho Man. Uh, you know, I think WCW's uh, business model was much to get people like me to not watch WWE because they were like, well, we're just going to send their old stars. Yeah. So I'm all about that. Yeah. Um, and then I was a huge Sting fan forever. Uh, still am. But... Uh, you know, I just, WWE was, uh, you know, early 90s, mid 90s was a real dark time for them. You know, you know, actually the way I started, I mean, I hope I'm not going to bore your fans with. No, no, wrestling. my fans love wrestling. Okay. So I actually, when you talked about Lex Luger, I'm glad I can kind of bring this up now. Um, I have a really weird uh, way I started watching wrestling. So after I got into it when I was a kid, um, the first pay-per-view that my friends ordered for me to come over and watch was King of the Ring 1993. That was Hulk Hogan's last WWF pay-per-view. And that was when uh, a Japanese photographer, do you remember, took a picture and fire in the eyes, fire in the eyes. And like Hogan goes down and Yokozuna wins. And um, a month later, like Lex Luger is like landing on the, on the ship and he body slams Yokozuna and they put Lex Luger in the Hulk Hogan spot. So I have no frame of reference. I had seen wrestling here and there. I remember Shawn Michaels putting Marty Jannetty's head through the window here and there. But I didn't start watching wrestling until Lex Luger was their number one guy. And I didn't know at the time that that was the darkest period in WWF history. Right. It was like 93, 94, 95. They had like the goon. And they had like the magician and they had like a, you know, the, a plumber as a character. I didn't know any of this was bad because I didn't see any of the right. good shit, you know? So I have a very high tolerance for bad wrestling because I got into it watching really bad, horrible shit. I watched Big Daddy Cole's entire run. Viscera. <laughs> yeah. He was fighting King Mabel. 
<laughs> who no one wanted to work with. No one wanted to work because he, because he, uh, reckless. Because he, he did this. Uh, I remember Kevin Nash did this podcast where, like, he was laying on his back and Viscera does this thing where he, he, he just, like, puts his legs out and sits on them. Just, poof, and he goes, like, oh, what the fuck do you, like, just broke my back. And, like, it was SummerSlam 95. It was, like, the worst business year ever for WWF. And I had no idea. And I remember watching all my, my favorite stars come over to WCW. I felt so betrayed. I'm watching Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. And then all of a sudden I'm Hogan's there and Savage. And I didn't get it, but I was so loyal to what I watched initially. I'm like a WWE fanatic, even when it's been bad, even when other companies have been better. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, 26 years. I've been watching WWE wrestling, even during the worst periods. Which is weird that you got into it in the, in its worst period. in its worst like, period, yeah. It's kind of like if you got into the group Kiss in the eighties, yeah, which is there, <laughs> yeah. Which I did, like that's why I can identify. Like, you know, when I was a kid, I I knew who Kiss was. You know, they were the biggest band in the world, but I really got it. See, there's Moses right there on TV. <laughs> uh, hey, yo, Moses, who's on the battle tonight? Let's roast. But they did like me in Montreal. By the way, this is an audio-only podcast, P.K. Subban's pictures on my TV right now. Uh, I said to Moses, I think, on night three in Montreal, hey, Moses, you look like P.K. Subban with AIDS. <laughs> and the crowd blew up. I mean, oh, that's good. They loved it. But, you know, Full you know, blown blew up, yeah. You know, it's a wild crowd when an AIDS line gets them going. Yeah, uh, of course. And then I bombed uh, a minute later when I made fun of Aaron <laughs> Rodgers, who was in the room. <laughs> I heard this story. That was all. You and Aaron Rodgers, you really pissed him off, right? Well, I was told to go after him. You know, like I was given instructions. Hey, Aaron Rodgers, greatest quarterback playing right now. And I'm a Steeler fan, and I will say Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I love Roethlisberger. But, uh, and so I was like, hey, Moses, you look like those receivers. Aaron Rodgers always overthrows. <laughs> <laughs> and Aaron Rodgers just looked at me like, you fucking dick. Yeah. Uh, I make $12 million a year doing what I do. What are you getting paid? Uh, not $12 million. Aaron Rodgers also does the championship. Yeah. So he's a wrestling, he's a wrestling fan. Yeah. I would think, and I tried to find him after the show to apologize, but he, he got out of there pretty fast. So uh, <laughs> I, I think he knew I was going to seek him out. But, uh, you know, I, I, I would have thought he would have gotten my heel care. Yeah. But, That's too uh, bad. But he did not. But uh yeah, like I got into Kiss in the eighties. So like which is their real dark time. Like real. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it was like, you know, they were trying to be like a forty year old Bon Jovi act. Yeah. So it was so weird because I, I would go back and watch some you know, there was a video store um with a bunch of bootleg WWF VHSs, you know, near my place. And I would watch like old 1990 and 1991 before I watched it. And, and uh, the, the, what really made me feel weird was I'm like, why does this feel like it was like rated R back in the like early nineties? Yeah. Like, like what Jake, Jake Roberts slaps Elizabeth. And then he has yeah. the, the snake go on Randy Savage's arm. And I'm like, this looks like it would have happened like later on, you know, like, and now it became like a kid's show. Yeah, I, was, I watched. I watched it when it became like the first PG phase. You know. Well, that's when the WCW started to take over. When they started they, to take over, yeah, they, they would got, go with like the raunchier fucking angles and you know more violent. Yeah, and, but that's also why ECW got like a, a bit of a you know uh, a bump because yeah. people wanted violence. Like you know, WCW was kind of violent, but it was pretty choreographed. Yeah. E ECW was like insane. Like, God, I watched some of that shit, man. I can't. I can't, I don't think I can watch it anymore. I get too squeamish. It's too. Uh, well, at I out here they they're. Uh, it was mainly in uh, at Birmingham High. There was a company called XPW. Oh my god, I remember that. Yeah, which I would go to a few of their shows, uh, and uh, it was uh, twice as bad as e ECW. Oh geez, really? Because they didn't have the budget, so they would do like these stunts that didn't like. Like they didn't have the budget for a, a strong ladder, so like the guy, <laughs> and I've told this story before, but like there was this guy named Supreme, who was like their spot guy. Like he, any wacky spot, they would have this guy do, and like he climbed to the ladder. There was three. It was a ring. Three sides of it had the ropes, but there was a fourth side for I still don't know why had no ropes. Like it was like. <laughs> so they bring this ladder in, and uh, on the outside of the open end of the, of the ring he gets up to the top of course it breaks oh my god and he goes uh, like rib first into the open 
like edge oh of the, no and he had to have broken his ribs oh my god he's down for like five minutes this girl next to me is crying i'm like you a big fan he's like that's my fucking husband oh my god oh my god so they force him to get up you see like the owner of his oh, uh, no. xpw go up to him and i'm sure it was more along the lines of hey man you gotta finish this fucking match get up or you're not getting paid or oh whatever. geez very much like comedy just keep going <laughs> dude so they get another ladder and they put it in the <laughs> middle of the ring and the spot was the ladder was supposed to fall over the open end of the ring onto a table of barbed wire oh. light bulbs oh. and on the other side of that was concrete floor oh no so he gets up to the top oh no 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 the owner of the rob black i don't know why i have i have such a weird memory for these things he was like the vince mcmahon yeah uh, pushes him over and he overshoots the table Ooh. falls right under the concrete. that's the that's br is he alive yeah she got up from that and I remember every wrestler in the back came out and I like, just gave him a standing that, ovation. Oh yeah, I guess it was worth it, huh? Uh, I, mean, I don't. I think back then I would have thought that was some cool shit, but I've gotten a little older and I, that stuff makes me sad. Like when I watch the wrestler and it's like, yeah, yeah. You, they staple my forehead, dude. Like not too, you know. That's what I mean. XBW was like. Uh, I mean, so they had a their ring announcer was uh, would wear a Nazi outfit. And he'd goose step to the ring doing the Sieg Heil thing, and the, the crowd was loving it. The JBL yeah. in Germany, yeah. But yeah. it was like, Jesus Christ, this is this league's crazy. And they had a gay wrestler, Angel, who, like, his finishing move was he, you know, he'd hit you, and you know, instead of falling on your back, you'd end up on all fours with your ass sticking up. And he'd come behind you instead of the ref tapping three times. He'd pump you three times, <laughs> and it was just the craziest. Did part. you do you remember uh, B Big v Viscera had uh, the sex machine gimmick, and he did the Visagra? Do you remember the Visagra move where they would be on their stomach, and he would just literally it would just be him dropping down and just butt fucking them? In the I ring. mean, it's crazy. That was in two thousand five. I know that, I, that wasn't like back in the like, you know that was only ten years ago. That's not that long ago. Well, I mean, I think wrestling, uh, they play to the uh, homophobic side of people. Yeah, yeah. You know, Billy and Chuck getting married. Oh, the pop they got when they said they weren't gay? Oh, I, yeah. Th that's like a Stone Cold Steve Austin pop. Right. Yeah, they're not gay. Wait a minute. Uh, this wasn't supposed to go this far, Rico. I mean, we're not gay, and the crowd just erupts. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being gay. Yeah, but, but they, if I was gay, yeah, I wouldn't marry you, I Chuck. I wouldn't marry you, Chuck. Oh, that's my favorite SmackDown I mean, you know, forget the homophobic. Yeah, that's yeah. you know but like uh yeah eric bischoff putting the thing on his uh, three minutes it's the yeah. my favorite smackdown moment of all time. oh i when he was on this couch right where you yeah. are i'm like you know you've done a lot of great things but we're gonna talk about billy and chuck <laughs> billy and chuck because that was and he said it here that uh that might have been the last great swerve uh in wrestling because yeah. he said nobody knew that who he was I, you know Smack, outside of stephanie smackdown never swerves anyone though you know like raw usually has all the swerves so like the fact that smackdown had an amazing one i think that might have been smackdown's only real big swerve right smackdown isn't really the swerve show yeah i mean because you don't you didn't know that was eric bischoff yeah man. i didn't and then uh it, like Rico, I don't know if Rico is gay in real life, but he played a great gay wedding. I think he's a Vegas cop. Yeah, or transit like a bus. Uh, he's not like a cop cop. He's like a tr subway cop. Like, yeah, I didn't have a subway in Vegas, but like uh, transit. Uh, yeah, but he, I like I said, if he is gay, that's fine. Uh, but man, he if he isn't, he's a good actor. You know, one time, uh, Gold, I, I forgot, maybe I'm imagining this, but I distinctly remember one time Gold Dust was wrestling Rico, and I believe Gold Dust called him a fag or something. Oh, there's a, <laughs> it, was, it was the weirdest, yeah. There's a tape, uh, of course, Jerry Lawler. I saw, I know what you're talking about, it's on the network now. I the, forget the promo who does about Gold Dust. Uh, this is why your old man, old dust, don't love you no more because you you married the the biggest gold digger in your whatever home city. You went around putting a wig on and kissing men like a flaming fag. Yeah, it's like what? And the what do you fuck? and what do you call that little brat, Dakota? They should have called her Target because everyone had a shot at it. I and mean, I remember when he said that. I 
I saw the promo, but then you, uh, I have it on the network now. The the announcing is what it was really really funny when Vince just goes, "What?" Like I don't think they anyone told Vince he was gonna say that. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> but there was another one like from like the eighties, of course, where he. Uh, I, I I'm probably gonna get the name wrong, but I think he was like wrestling someone like Bobby Eaton or you know someone old. I'm talking old school wrestler with that reference. And he's like, yeah, Bobby, no, you're just a fag. Like, there wasn't even a setup to it. It was just, you know, on live TV. Yeah. Like, granted, it's like local Memphis, you know, uh, whatever. But, you know, and who knew that uh, Jerry Lawler would say fag? <laughs> but, you know, like, there's a clip out there when Hogan used to work as a heel with um, Freddie Blassie where he... Um, he calls the junkyard dog a, a black boy, I believe. Like, I think you can find it on YouTube. Oh, there, I mean, if we, if we want to get into the racial stuff, <laughs> first of all, Jerry Lawler is the one who came up with the gimmick for Kamala. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, God. And I swear to God, come on, please go to KamalaSpeaks.com. Yeah. If you like wrestling, which I know a lot of you guys do, and girls, yeah. uh, it's the greatest book for of a wrestling biography I've ever read. I don't know if he wrote it necessarily. I have a hard time believing he has a memory that, you know, but it's just from uh, Andre the Giant shitting on Bad News Brown because uh, <laughs> he had diarrhea and uh, great stories like that. It's a real coffee table book. But, uh, I mean, well, there's that one uh, Ric Flair when he's uh, talking about, uh, who was he talking about? He was just doing a... a Ron Simmons, maybe? No, I don't know. It was a black wrestler. But... It, were you talking about the one where he's like, you're not going to get on Arsenio Hall or something like no, that? No, he was talking about, he, he was hyping up some match and he's like, uh, Dale Murphy, local hero from Atlanta, Georgia. He's a big deal, but he's not the champ. Herschel Walker, for all you black folk out there, you could tell he clearly wanted to say oh, the man. N word. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, wrestling and racism. They only, you know, they the most recent 2000. Uh, 2003, 2004 evolution. Right. They were really racist. Like, I remember the Triple H's whole thing with Booker T. Remember, like, you with your nappy hair? Are you going to do a little dance for me? And and then and then he wins the feud. That's actually, that's one of the most baffling victories ever when WrestleMania 19, it was like, oh, what, did the clan just win this feud? Like, I understand wrestling and him being a heel, but I don't, I don't know why he won that feud. But then there's one that I don't remember because I'm just watching old Raws on the network where Randy Orton is in the ring with Shelton Benjamin. And he goes, this is what's wrong with you people. And Sean goes, what, you people? And he goes, yeah, man, we give you guys an inch and you take a mile. And I was like, what the fuck? And Randy Orton wins that for you, too. They just had Evolution just run roughshod over all the black wrestlers in the company. What about when fucking Vince McMahon walks up to John Cena <laughs> yeah. and goes, now, people, these are Vince McMahon's words, not mine. <laughs> and he's like, what up, my nigga? <laughs> And then the camera slowly pans to the left, and Booker, Booker T's T. like, "What did he just say?" <laughs> it's like, "What?" This owner of the billion dollar company is saying the GGA. And, and he he looks at the camera almost like with this like he he yeah. he nods his head and yeah, like, like proud. Fuck you Booker. What about all the Asian wrestlers? Or to Jerry, all of them have uh, a green mist like they're dragons, and all of the. Do you remember from um, Kai and Tai? Oh. They did this, the gimmick where they they're talking into the mic, but there's no words coming out. <laughs> Like, oh, dude, I want to defeat you. <laughs> and then Funaki just goes, indeed. And I remember one time they did a prank on these guys where they come out and they're doing it and there's there's no words coming out. And it's like a Sunday night heat. Right. So they start walking to the ring and someone just yells, indeed, and he just scares the shit out of them. <laughs> like, they really fucked with these guys. Oh, real. yeah, they love it, too. Like, they, you know, that wrestling's like the most racist like, you know, they're really doing away with that, though. Well, you have to now. You I can't. mean, they actually like they got their whole roster for the Orlando thing the, with like a little rainbow uh, ribbon on the screen. Vince looks like he's going to cry. And oh, it's like yeah. it's crocodile tears. He doesn't give a shit about <laughs> it. Think half the fucking people on the roster go to Pulse nightclub, like, you know, which is fine. You yeah. Know, but like, well, his friend is Pat Patterson. I would imagine yeah, he's yeah. very sad about that. Right. Well, I'm sure uh, the ring boys that were. Molested, All right. <laughs> Allegedly. Well, come on, man. You think Pat Patterson fuck with the ring boys? I mean, I don't, I wasn't there. So I, I, but you know, it's like the Cosby case. You know, one or two of these girls say Bill Cosby did something to them. Yeah, maybe they're in the 
Go, they need the money. They're lying. But we've already ate girls. It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I you're right. They're all, uh, you know, lying. But, you know, I wasn't there. So Piper would always get squeamish when I would bring up Pat Patterson's name. <laughs> he, the girl, I don't want to get sued. I'm like, well, it's your podcast. So, I'm, you know, I'll go rogue. <laughs> But, uh, well, I mean, well, yeah, you can't, like, you couldn't have a character like Akeem, the African Dream. You know? I didn't know he was someone else. He was the one-man one gang, gang. And then he turns into Akeem. You know, Kate, my girlfriend Kate, she never watches, I mean, she kind of watches wrestling every now and then. I kind of make her for, like, the big events. But they had the countdown of the of the 10 worst gimmicks ever. And, and, and I was like... Well, he turns into like a, a black African, like a white African rapper or something, right? You no, know, like, my brothers. <laughs> and he do like the jive, like oh, man. whatever that move is. That's my favorite. If you if you have the network, the top 10 countdown of like the worst gimmicks is like the funniest half hour. It's like they had Disco Inferno on there. Remember That's Disco really Fever? The Quebecer. Is that his name? Yeah. No, no, the no, the Mountie. They oh, became yeah, Jacques, uh, Jacques Rougeau, Rougeau or whatever. And he had the 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 cattle prod. <laughs> And they um they turned into the Quebecers, but I didn't I didn't know who the Mounties were. So their theme song was "We're Not the Mounties," and I'm like, well, who said you were? You know, <laughs> right, no. I missed all that shit back then. Oh, they had some great, uh, you know, I mean, but the racist characters were like so. And that, that you know, I don't like to plug the WWE network. Sometimes their feed is choppier than Seal's cheekbone, but like. <laughs> what? But granted, you're paying nine bucks, so it is a good deal for it's nine ninety nine. I, I watch it all day, uh, yeah. And the same thing for UFC Fight Pass. I mean, if you're a UFC junkie, it, I mean, for nine bucks, it's a pretty good deal. Uh, but uh, there's some of the like look, they had a manager, Gary Hart, who is unbelievable. But he was kind of like the forerunner of Akeem, the African Dream. He's a white bald guy with a Fu Manchu like goatee, and he would speak jive <laughs> and like. He's got one of the greatest promos ever where it, it wasn't WWE. It was like NWA or AWA where he was managing some guy named Killer Brooks. And they were so low budget. They literally went out in a, like a dirt field just to shoot a promo. And they start the promo. And then this black guy in a Cadillac pulls up and clearly not part of the sketch. And <laughs> honks the horn and Gary Hart goes, yo, yo, brother, I'm filming something. We'll get back to you in a later, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and the black guy just speeds off. It's like, <laughs> you couldn't do that now because someone would complain about it. Or, you know, Billy and Chuck, you'd probably. Are, are you are you uh, bummed out by that? Or are you glad that you can't do that stuff anymore? Well, I mean, uh, you know, we're, I guess you'd say we're from two different generations. Uh, you know I mean not, not that far apart but you know almost 20 years so like I grew up you know watching TV shows like All in the Family yeah I know but I know All in the Family I know all those shows I'm just saying like I am bummed out you know like I grew up with a show called The White Shadow which is one of the more groundbreaking shows uh, that was ever on network television because it you know it's about a white coach coaching an all black school in the ghetto and uh you know they dealt with like rape and uh, there was one episode where one of the players was gay and it was like this was on cbs in like the late yeah, 70s yeah so you know nowadays i'm growing up with like you know big brother and survivor well but you know you can't do shows like it's always honey in philadelphia back in the 80s yeah you know I mean, what i mean like south park you couldn't do in the 80s like it's just kind of different now you know like if you choose to you know like whatever you can focus on we can get away with i remember like there was one storyline on smackdown where i'm like i'm not like into like oh let's make everything cleaned up but do you remember heidenreich oh yeah, yeah. Heiden do you remember when heidenreich basically rapes michael cole yeah and reads a poem i'm watching that i'm like i don't know i think this is like it's, it's funny but i'm like how, how much further can they push this you know Oh yeah, I mean, what about fucking Mark Hen Mark Henry sexual chocolate fucking an eighty year old May Young? Yeah, you know there was actually a very uh, an even lesser known clip than when he when he fucks May Young and she gives birth to a hand. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I love that clip of like Pat Patterson it's funny. and Briscoe, and you see them. Everyone, you know, they got her legs in the stirrups. God knows what that must have looked like. <laughs> and you know, I think Pat Patterson was like. Oh my God! And they <laughs> the doctor pulls out a hand, like a yeah. white hand. It was like, yeah. what the fuck? There, there is a there's another clip of Mark Henry going to um, 
uh, sexual rehab. And, and they ask, they, they ask, this is like, I don't know if it's on YouTube anymore. This is like on SmackDown. They, and they go like, what, when was your uh, first sexual encounter? And he was like, he was like nine years old or something. And they go like, who it was? Goes, it was my sister. Oh my your God. sister? <laughs> like, and it was like, yeah, he, yeah. Mark Henry uh, kayfabe fucked his sister when he was nine. Uh, yeah, well, this is also the same company that had Triple H fucking a dead body to get yeah. Kane to fight him. Yeah. Katie Vick. I Katie think, Vick. Uh, so, I, I mean, you, you just... Did you know there was a... They did it in a funeral home. Did you know that there was a real funeral happening next door? Triple H tells his story where, like, he's, like, in there and he's he's grunting. And then um, and then Vince is like, no, you gotta, you gotta do it. You gotta do it harder. And then uh, someone in the next funeral, like, kind of walk in there like, shh, can you keep it down? There's a, there's a funeral going on. What about when they had the big boss, man, like... <laughs> Interrupting, uh, I think the big big shows, show's dad's funeral. Who had died of cancer, like yeah, legitimately. But uh, they, they had like I think the final thing before the pay per view was I think the big boss. No, it was I think Big Boss Man was towing the casket away. Yeah, the big show jumped on the casket and, and he, he like rolls he was off. Like, what the? you know? There's, there's so many funny things about that clip. First of all, the big show is wearing leather pants for his oh my god for his father's funeral. And there's a there's a line in there that's just unnecessary when uh, he's dragging it away and he's like, "I always knew your daddy was a drag queen." Like he's just like he does a pun during it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Big the Big Boss Man in 1999 was like the most despicable heel ever. He also. I killed Al Snow's dog Pepper and then made him eat the dog. Do you remember he was in the hotel room? Yeah, yeah, you like that? <laughs> this is your dog Pepper. Well, that reminds me when uh, XPW got shut down because they, on their website, uh, I think it was XPWrestling.com or whatever it was, they had a live countdown clock of a puppy, like a webcam shot of a puppy. And uh, Rob Black, the owner, was threatening to kill it live just to get traffic on the way. And he would have, too. I know. Oh, my God. That's terrible. And then I think the, uh, I don't know what uh, FC, I don't know if the FCC would be the one in charge, but they sh they were like, what, what are you doing? You can't be <laughs> trying to kill a fucking puppy on. Uh... So that was the end of XPW. <laughs> do you think, do you think uh, he went too far, Earl? Is that... I mean, I'm a huge dog lover, so. Uh... So that's where you draw the line. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm not. Uh, I can't even watch that commercial on. I know we only comics and bartenders. I think see this commercial of the, uh, the I think it's Sarah McLaughlin singing. The, oh yeah, and to see the like the dog with no fucking eyes and one yeah. leg, and uh, I I can't even like get through that, let alone. So you must really hate the big boss man for killing that dog. Yeah, fuck that guy. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> he's so. dead. Yeah. I, I liked him uh, when he was... I have one of my favorite wrestling t-shirts ever, and I can't wear it out in public too often because it offends so many people, is when him and Akeem were the Twin Towers. <laughs> and some guy on eBay had the best shirt. It's, he, he, it's a picture of them posing together, and they look like the Twin... It, it's weird how two humans can take the form of a building. And... Uh, it says Twin Towers, never forget. <laughs> and I'm like, I've got to get this T-shirt. <laughs> and I can't wear it out in public. I wore it to the gym once and some guy's like, yo, man, I'm from New York. That's fucked up. I'm like, oh, sorry. My bad, my bad. And I, the new Kamala shirt I got, I can't wear out in public. What's either. the new Kamala shirt? Uh, let me see if I can pull it up. But uh, it is, uh, I'm going to ask you a question so I can pull up the uh, phone. Oh, go ahead. Uh, let me see. So well, like. Has there ever been a wrestling? I don't get offended by too much. Uh, has there ever? You need the bathroom? Uh, uh, I'm just. Uh, there's a third party here who'd like to be uh, anonymous. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's all good though. It's not like some uh, weird thing. It's not like Tommy would say. It's not just that. See? Uh, has there? I don't get offended by much, but uh, you know, like I was. My dad was away on business a lot when I was a child. So I was raised uh, by like a stepfather type of figure who was black. So I've always, uh, that's why I guess I take some of the WWE's portrayals of black uh, characters a uh, little like, yeah, that's a little out of bounds. Has there ever been any character storyline that legitimately like was like, oh, that's kind of fucked up? Yeah. I mean, I, I would never say like, hey, they shouldn't do it or whatever, you know, like um, I would say the Triple H, uh, Katie Vick thing. 
um, just because it was so like, I'm, I'm like, like, this is so fucking stupid and gross, you know, like, um, and he, he like, he has a fake brain. I just, I screwed your brains out and throws it at the TV. A lot of the, a lot of the things I thought they did that were really fucked up was mostly like, um, Randy Orton saying that Eddie Guerrero is in hell just to get Rey Mysterio to fight him. Um, I, I also think like, um, when Edge and Vicky Guerrero started hooking up and like just right after Eddie died, any of the any of the dead wrestler stuff kind of gets. Um, now I'm showing Robin right now. Uh, <laughs> it, it's a it's a t-shirt I bought uh, from uh, I, I think it was ProWrestlingTees.com. Pro Wrestling Tees, I think, yeah. And that's I don't get it. They're not a sponsor of inappropriate. Or, hey, speaking of sponsors, it's uh, at Mike Knuckles, Stephen Piercy's microphone holders uh, on Twitter. ProStockHockey.com and the newest sponsor at Beverly Kills CA. Great t-shirts. Uh, so sorry, got the plugs out of the way there. But uh, I have a uh, I bought a yellow t-shirt with Kamala holding Kim Chi's hand, <laughs> and uh, in it, uh, Kamala's ho- of course holding a spear. Kim Chi is wearing what appears to be blackface makeup. It looks like blackface. Yeah, it, it's not. It was just a uh, like a, almost like a. Uh, fencing mask oh okay and then but the lettering says deepest darkest jungles the uganda book <laughs> and uh, i showed this t-shirt to like seven black dudes i know uh and seven out of seven were like ah, you can't wear that on public. <laughs> seven out of seven huh? but pretty, i did show ratio. the same seven the newest kamala shirt i got uh, it's in route now as we speak. It's a black T-shirt with it's a great picture of Kamal in his prime, where he's kind of like doing the muscle pose, and it says "Straight out of Uganda." That's that's good. I, I think I could get away with it. Uh, it's compromise, Earl. That's good. Well, I you know probably too old to be wearing wrestling T-shirts. I gave most of my wrestling T-shirts to Joe Urell. Oh, really? Uh, great uh, legend uh, of roast battle. Yeah, himself. I love Joe. Huge wrestling fan too. Yeah, I gave him a bunch of Piper shirts and. Uh, I think I gave him a billion. I think I bought a shirt on eBay, Billy and Chuck or homos or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Really subtle stuff. Yeah. Huh? I'm like, here, Joe, you wear this one. <laughs> uh, Has there, you know, the, the most recent story, I don't know. I don't know if you still watch like current wrestling. I, I, a couple minutes here and there. I Do just you, don't like it. You know that they brought up, um, Rick Flair's dead son in a promo. Did you know about that? I heard like, about it. Like, like, um, see, this is me. Like, I'm like, whatever they can do, whatever. I, I don't want, whenever I say like, Oh, I don't like this. I don't want people to be like, I'm trying to shut it down or freedom of speech or whatever. But when um, Paige says to Charlotte, like, talk about, you know, I guess your brother didn't have that much fight, did he? And it's like, he's not even part of the story. He was never even in the company. And then I guess like they didn't even ask um, um, Ric Flair or the, you know, the mom about it. And I think that kind of shit is like, I guess crossing the line a little bit, but I don't know what, I mean, what do you think? I mean, you, if you tell me I'm wrong, then I'll. If, no, I mean, I, well, I never tell anyone they're wrong. No, no. Cause it's like, if, if you have a compelling argument, like, well, it's a heel. Cause some of my friends were like, okay, finally there's some heat on this angle. But what happened was they, they canceled the angle. Like it never happened after that. They do that a lot. Like, you know, uh, like there's some angles that just stop, you know? Uh, I mean, I, I uh, you know, uh, I mean, that's a tough one. I mean, I, I guess it's, I mean, I guess it's like roast battle. Anything goes. I mean, you would think in, uh, in roast battles very much like wrestling, like, you know, is it cool? People make uh, transition jokes on you uh, to most people would be like, that's fucking awful. But it's like, it's the purpose of the show. Uh, it's true. Yeah. Uh, do people, is it, you know, uh, like when Olivia and uh, Jesse Joyce did jokes about my parents two months apart, uh, dying, uh, most, an outsider would be like, that's insane. <laughs> How did you not kill them? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, so I like wrestling and roast battle. You know what you sign up for when you're watching. Well, wrestling. okay, so but we're talking about like as a general rule. I agree with you. Every anything goes. I'm talking about you. Like I'm, I'm, I'm curious about you because I'm interested in like what you think about this stuff because you grew up with um, um, the old roast from the 50s and 60s, which and I like. Yeah, which, uh, which which I like some of that stuff too. But I'm saying like, what like is there anything that offends you? But like, not offends you as in they shouldn't do this. But like, as personally, you watch it and you go, "That's fucked up." I mean, 
Or like a roast joke that you've heard. We're like, oh, that, I don't know, that's kind of... Well, I asked Jesse Joyce before I did the Greg Giraldo jokes, uh, which, you know, Greg Giraldo was his best friend, writing partner. Uh, you know, I said to him right before the show, I'm like, because I know Jesse, but I don't know him that well. Uh, and I'm like, hey, man, is, without telling him the jokes, I'm like, hey, is there any subject you don't want me to hit? And I, he knew what I was asking him, basically. Uh, he's like, no, man, what, it's fair game. And he said the same thing. He said, anything you don't want me to say? And uh, I'm like, no, you know. So, I mean, you know what you're signing up for. I mean, uh, you know, I asked Olivia, uh, you know, when we battled uh, and we were dating at the time, I was like, uh, any subject uh, you don't want me to hit? You know, she said, hey, I don't want you to talk about my rape. I'm just, no problem. Even though it won me the battle. Uh, <laughs> you know, and she's asked me the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, uh, I mean, with the, my battle with Keith, you know, we only were given 25 minutes notice. So I, I, I don't even think we fucking. Uh, yeah, you didn't do that part. Uh, but like with, with that particular battle, like, uh, like in terms of roast battle, I'm a counter puncher. Like if people are nice to me, uh, I'll I'll be silly with them. Like you know, and I had one joke that you know might have. I don't think Keith would have thought it would cross the line, but you know, to me it was like ah, I don't really. I mean, I'm friends with Keith. We're good friends, I guess you'd say. But I'm like, you know, we're not like best friends. So this joke could cross the line about his mom. Uh, but I was holding it. Like I said, okay, if he's going to get nasty with me, Yeah, then you'll use it, I've right? I've got one. You, then you'll go, like if he goes level 10, you'll go level 10. Right, I'll go level 11 with this one. Yeah, uh, but what about what about wrestling? You ever see a storyline where you're like, what the fuck are they doing? No, because it's, uh, I mean, there's storylines that make me go, what the fuck? Uh, like, you know, the Mark Henry, you know, May Young <laughs> angle. But that didn't like offend me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess why I brought up roast battle is like, you know, with wrestling, I know when I turn on Monday Night Raw, if they're going to do a pedophilia angle. Yeah. I knew that uh, when I turned the channel to that. Oh, you know what? I'll tell you one time that I think that they really crossed the line um, uh, is when Vince made Trish bark like a dog. I think that was like, what you know, what the fuck are you? You're like, you're the owner of the company. Do you remember this? And it wasn't so much that just that storyline and it's not really Vince's fault. It's the culture we were in. He was the heel and the crowd went fucking, it was like the biggest pop. Oh yeah. And you, and you watch it and that, that kind of stuff is just kind of like, uh, uh, you know, like I get what they were doing and, and Trish did get her come up and I know how wrestling works, you know? And, um, like, I mean, I didn't like the Billy and Chuck angle, like, you know, when <laughs> Billy said, you know, we're not gay and the crowd just erupted. Oh, I said, ah, that's kind of like, yeah. So that's what I mean. Just like those moments, like, that but doesn't pain, but I'm, I also like, I've been watching for 26 years, so it doesn't make me stop watching. Muhammad Hassan is another character yeah. where like everything that he said as a criticism of the company, if you look back on it, the rest, the crowd were, were the heels. During yeah, those days, I mean, you know, he's just like, I'm Arab. You don't like me because I'm Arab. And they would chant USA at him. And Stone Cold says that he called him a sand person. The crowd <laughs> went. And he's and he like, he takes his, you with your stupid toe on your head. He takes his, the turban. He like wipes his nose with it. And yeah, I mean, I could see if I was Muslim or Middle Eastern. I was like, oh, this is kind of fucked <laughs> up. Uh, you know, I didn't like particularly, uh, you know, uh, you know, I have a lot of, uh, not a lot, but I have a few special needs friends. You know, I, I don't want to say retarded, but like, yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess retarded is the word to use. But uh, so when they did the Eugene, Eugene, uh, you know, Eric Bischoff's cousin. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, and, oh, yeah. It was his nephew. Yeah. Oh, you're right. I, yeah. I, I just, I used to watch that, uh, the, his debut a couple hours ago. Yeah. I mean, it's like, oh, this is a, like, <laughs> Just really necessary. Yeah, he he made them play musical chairs yeah. one time on Raw, and uh, do you know they had him turn heel for like two weeks? Oh uh, yeah, I mean a very brief. <laughs> like this is like what? Shit. Okay, now that's fucked up. You're, I you can you almost like justify it as he's a baby face and he's, but he's like, yeah, you don't like me. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, this is not work as a heel, dude. Like, I it just like well, I was at the WrestleMania because it was at State twenty one, yeah, WrestleMania twenty one, and uh, you know I was dating the manager from Motorhead, who uh, the female manager. There's two managers. Oh, well, there I was you not go. Not dating Todd, which would be nothing wrong with that. But uh, we're not gay. Uh, I'm Here's not enough, gay. The, the crowd but, is oh, popping. I, <laughs> I should have fake sound noise. <laughs> I'm not gay. <laughs> Woo! But if I was gay, I wouldn't marry you, Todd. 
uh, no, Todd uh, Singerman, great ma- music manager, made Motorhead, you know, who they are. Uh, we got to go because uh, they were playing Triple H's uh, song live. Yeah. And uh, in one of the matches, uh, Muhammad Hassan was like beating the shit out of Eugene. Like, <laughs> couldn't, probably the two worst characters ever. <laughs> I just watched this recently. Yeah. A retarded, or, or a mentally challenged, uh, you know, a man boy child man boy you know uh and uh you know an arab i think we had just invaded a country or something like we did uh, yeah iraq or yeah. i think we had just captured uh saddam hussein or something so you've got the muhammad Hassan and the, uh, what was the davari davari was y- he ye- was great yeah yelling dum-dum. Yeah. yeah just yelling uh, a different language and then hulk hogan comes out to make the save that yeah. was pretty cool with a giant american flag oh yeah. i was i love that as you know wrestling taught me how to be racist when i was a kid t- yeah so when I, in 1993 that was the year i started watching wrestling so within three four months of the storyline what the the main storyline was Lex Luger, the All American America, love it or leave it. And I would, I, I was a kid and I would say that to people at school. Just, right. America, love it. And I was Asian, so they just thought I was being a right. really satirical kid for some reason. And then they had Ludwig Borga from yeah, from yeah. from uh, Helsinki. And I remember like they were like, "You're from El Stinky," and the crowd would go crazy with their American flags. And that was the first time I thought like, "Wow, making fun of where someone is from is really funny." It can be. It turned me into a Republican for a while. I was a Republican in college because of professional wrestling. And what do you know? Yeah, whatever. You know, right. I mean, oh, I'm still a Republican. No, I don't know. I don't want to talk about politics. But I'm No, no, saying, I just, so you're like, I, I mean, we're not going to get into it, but like you're uh, in the I'm, middle. I'm probably, I'm. Like if you had to lean I'm, one I'm way. probably, uh, if I had to like pick a side, I'm probably very, very far left. Right, right. But um, in terms of like art, I'm, I think I'm more of a. Uh, I get into a lot of arguments with people who are very far left because I, I I'm on, first of all, I'm on this show, you know, and right. like I watch wrestling and I, I like a lot of whatever problematic things. So that's kind of the only, t- um, doing the roast battle and doing what I do is kind of hard too. Oh yeah. Cause some people will find me from my, my feminist blogs and then they'll find a roast battle and they're like, Oh my God, you're so mean, you know? And I'm like, okay, look, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a full person, okay? I, I like harsh art and I like progressive whatever. Yeah. So well, you'd have to be a fucking idiot to think that uh, any of us from you to Keith to me to Connor. That's to, how I feel, yeah. To Olivia to, you know, Leah, K. Janian to, you know, uh, any of the judges, uh, the Negro wave, yeah, you know, uh, that we mean any of what we're saying. That's I mean. how I feel about it. I feel like there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of love there, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't... I, like, you said it... Uh, uh, you know, I know one person who uh, wants to roast me, who uh, hates me, and I'll, I'll never roast them. Yeah, well, I mean, there's no fun in it if, like, it's people just two are... people You're, shitting you're just them. trying to really hurt someone's feelings. So, and I've held back. You know, I everyone tells me their secrets at the comedy store. I know things. I know who's fucking who. I know who's in the closet and who isn't. You know, I mean, because I, people trust me because I can keep my mouth shut. Uh, so I know all the dirt. And there's been times in roast battle where I could have really gotten a big, big laugh uh, if I would have exposed certain uh, secrets. But I don't. Here's another thing about the roast battle is that I think anything goes and all that stuff. But I actually don't like it when someone exposes a secret like live, live on stage. It's tough. I just think I just think like, God, that's like like to me, it's like so you won a battle. Like, was that worth losing your friendship over this person? Like, but hey, if it's worth it for you, then that's that's what makes you great and, and that's great for you but i personally just don't like i'd rather um stay friends and lose a battle but maybe that's the, what's gonna cost me from being great you know well you know i think with roast battle at the end of the day i think the biggest uh you know uh, it's a reality check of two minutes after the battle people is like okay you know what's going on tonight yeah. you know it's a very short uh you know, like people will talk about Pat and Keith's battle, uh, you know, uh, for a while. And, you know, people come up to me and tell me how much they like me and Joe's battle still. To, you know, People still talk about my battles with Connor and Ramsey yeah. and April, which is really flattering to me. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you get respect. But, you know, the the excitement is over relatively fast. Yeah. 
Uh, it's like you. It's like you fuck someone and you came and you're like, oh shit, now yeah, what do we do? I just, next? I just told, uh, I just told everyone that you, you fucked a minor, like on stage, or whatever, you know. Well, like, I mean, you know, yeah. well, yeah, your sexual past will definitely be exposed <laughs> yeah. uh, in roast battle. But I'm my, I, you know, my sexual past is pretty open up at the store, so uh, you know, I know it's, you know, there's not much. I don't have any secrets. So, yeah, you know, there's not much. Uh, like I think that's key. Like, like you. You don't have any secrets that I know of, so it's like you know where they're gonna hit you at. I have some secrets that I that I told some of the battlers, and that's why I won't battle some of them. But I think like uh, if you, it depends on who you are, like or where you are with them. Like if I, you know, if, you, if I was gonna battle you, and I said, "Hey, listen, I, I don't really want you talking about my parents dying." Uh, and you say, well, listen, this is something I don't want you talking about. I would respect it. Yeah, but but the people that I want to battle, I, th- I don't think it would be fair to them because they would say nothing's off limits. If someone tells me there's nothing off limits, then I feel like it's a hypocrite. I, I think I did that once and I felt like oh, I'm being kind of a hypocrite that, you know, hey, don't talk about these couple of things. So I, I what I do is I just give them more ammo. I'm like, here are some other secrets right. of mine. But oh yeah i mean uh, i don't know how we got back on the, I, I like roast battle so much i guess but it's such a uh, i mean it's rest- such a big part of my life and wrestling and roast battle like, it's all this it's all this you know but swag it, and shit they parallel each other a lot yeah you know i think 20 minutes ago 25 minutes ago you asked me if there's anything that uh didn't offend me and i think i started with a roast battle answer because it, it's you know i guess what i was trying to say was uh you know, if I'm not offended at roast battle, wrestling's not going to offend me with, you know. <laughs> That's a good point. You know, I mean, I didn't like when, like, Junkyard Dog would be on all fours with a dog collar. collar yeah. Uh, going, you thought that was distasteful, Earl? Is that, I, mean, you know, uh, I mean, I'm not black, so, uh, you, you know, I'm not. I could see someone being black going, what the fuck? Uh, this guy's barking like a dog <laughs> on all fours. Uh yeah. You know, I don't uh, like telling any other races, minorities, sexual sexual preference. You know, well, that doesn't. It's not offensive. If I'm not that category, how, who am I to? I mean, you know. Yeah. Uh, what What's your favorite storyline? Do you have one? I mean, I oh boy. Uh, well, I do. Uh, stay the when uh, it was probably the last storyline where they took their time. They really milked it. Uh, is when Hogan and Sting fought the first time. Starcade, yeah, Starcade '97, right? Yeah, it was nine months before yeah. Sting and him were uh, in the ring, and it's like it, you wanted that match so bad, and they they would do it perfectly with little vignettes of Sting in the rafters, and then you know Bischoff would be talking shit, and then Sting would pop up behind him. Oh, yeah. You know, a oh, couple yeah. times. The, the bottle hitting him on the head. I listened to yeah. that podcast recently. And- well, there's a beer, like, there's, <laughs> you know, and I showed Eric, uh, the, the he didn't remember it, but I'm like, there's uh, Sting comes up behind him, and just as Sting's about to get to him, someone from the crowd throws a beer at Bischoff, and it hits him, fuck, soaks him, <laughs> and he just shoots to look like, you motherfucker. <laughs> and then he goes right back into character. Uh, but like that... That match, they, they, they fucked up the ending. The match though. wasn't good. Yeah. But uh, it, the build-up, the storyline, nine months, they would never do that now. You know, you know, do you remember, um, my favorite storyline ever is, um, it's so underrated to me, it's... um. Shawn Michaels and Chris Jericho from 2008. Do you remember that storyline? Mm-hmm. It was from it was from May until October. It was supposed to last one month, and it lasted five. And it started with uh, Shawn Michaels like during his match with Batista and Jericho's refereeing. He like he twists his ankle, and then Jericho's like, "Oh, you're f-. they're both baby faces." And Jericho's like, "You're faking it. Come on." Right. And everybody he's coming out, "Come on, you're, you're fit." And now people are booing Jericho because he's being such a dick. And Shawn's like, "My knees hurt, dude. My knees hurt." And then uh, one week, Sean saves Jericho and limps away, and Jericho comes out and apologizes. I'm so sorry that I I did that to you, you know. I, and Sean feels bad and goes, "Actually, you're you're right. I'm I'm faking it." Jericho's like, "Come on, whatever." And then Jer- and then Sean Michael super kicks him. Right. And then just and he's like, "I'm telling you, I'm fine." And people ch- cheer Sean Michaels, and that that was the beginning of Jericho's the greatest heel run I've ever seen in my life. Was Jericho in 2008? He ha- he has the suit on, and um. 
uh, like the storyline goes on for five months. He 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 injures Shawn Michaels' eye, takes credit for retiring him, and shows Shawn brings his wife out at SummerSlam. He's re- he's trying to retire. Jericho comes out and goes, "I'm not going to let you retire until you tell everyone that I retired you." And he goes to punch Shawn Michaels. He ducks and he punches Shawn Michaels' wife in the face. You don't remember this? I don't. Oh that my! Was- <laughs> it's it's the greatest storyline I've ever seen. In- I might have checked out of wrestling because but- like the the thing is is that the punch. When he punches Rebecca in real life, accidentally moves in. So Jericho punches her for real. Oh, really? Like he really, like he re- he writes about it in his book, and you can see Jericho's face. He looks like he wants to cry, but he's like he's in character. Right. I I don't want to bore people. This is so inside wrestling. Yeah, but, but who cares? But if you, it's it's such a good storyline because like no one watched wrestling in two thousand eight. So I was like, God damn it! Like I have no for like for like three years. I was the most popular kid in school. From 1999 to 2001, wow. and that was wrestling was like the biggest like oh, thing. Huge. So from like 94 to 99, I was a fucking nerd, and then for three years, everyone's like, "Hey, you know, Robert, hey, you, can we watch No Way Out at your house?" And then like now, whenever a cool storyline happens, I have no one to fucking talk to about it with. So 2008 is the best storyline ever, and I feel like I'm talking into the void. You know, it's well. I mean, I think in 2007, I had a new girlfriend. So t- 2007 to like. You know, at that time frame, I was like really into this girl, so I didn't like watch things I used to. And now well, that's understandable. I feel like uh, I know OJ's perspective on women. <laughs> oh, oh, hey! But, uh, but she's—I know she's not going to be listening to this. <laughs> she might, though. She might. <laughs> so you know, hopefully not this part. But I could be talking about someone else. Yeah, knows. yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I mean. Uh, I'm trying to think of other storylines. I mean, I love the NWO storyline. I thought that was really well done. The first, uh, you know, because you really didn't know that Hogan was going to turn heel. I didn't, yeah. And even Bischoff t- told a great story about that uh, the initial sting was supposed to, Hogan was uh, against turning heel. He didn't yeah. want to do it. Yeah. And uh, so Sting was set to be the bad guy. And they literally... Uh, uh, but I think uh, Bischoff said like a couple hours before the match, Hogan was still like, I don't know if I want to do this. And Sting was like in the dark. Like they were like, hey, man, you might be the third guy. Like you might turn on Macho Man and Luger. Uh, but then I guess an hour before the match, uh, Bischoff said he, him and Hogan were in like a closet. Yeah. Uh, to say that he, he said, I'll do it. Uh, and then they went over that speech, which to me is the greatest heel speech of all time. It's, a, it's such a good speech. Because he like... I think part of what makes wrestling great for me is like when it like reality and fiction kind of blend. Yeah. And you could tell in that speech, Hogan was really glad to stick it to Vince McMahon. Yeah. And he meant what he was I think saying. that I think the the last really great storyline was 2011 when CM Punk Oh right. sat on the stage and just like I I heard the backstage story is that he gave them a script that he just didn't use. And, yeah, he's, and he, just, he just ended up saying whatever he the fuck he wanted to say. I and mean, then, yeah, he's like, it, uh, you know, he's got, he's uh, got a match coming up in the UFC now. Yeah. So. Now, are you uh, into the UFC at all? Because I, the, I can't take real violence. See, that's why I think my love of wrestling has faded a little bit because I love the UFC now. So it's hard for me to watch, you know, uh, choreographed. Uh, and listen, WWE, any wrestlers, TNA. I don't know who watches that, but uh, <laughs> I don't even know. What you that. don't like Brother Nero and. Uh... <laughs> I mean, I liked it when they had the six sided ring. The, yeah. Like, okay, this is different. I liked it for a couple of years. Uh, yeah. AJ, I mean, for... AJ Styles and Samoa Joe oh and God, those. AJ they Styles were great. Yeah. His, uh, his uh, matches he had in New Japan. Is it all pro Japan? or? What and, is... and I think it's New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, it's, which is on Axis TV at Weird Hours. Uh, he had some matches with this Asian guy. Uh, must have been their top guy. Uh, unbe- like, was like, wow. Oh, yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. I, I, yeah. I, I'm not, I don't follow that promotion, so I don't know who this guy was, but it was like, wow, this could get me back into wrestling. Yeah. Um, and Josh Barnett, who uh, is a ex UFC heavyweight champion, he's uh, announcer with Jim Ross. Oh, okay. Uh, and Josh Barnett still fights in the UFC, but uh, he's got a love of pro wrestling. Yeah. Uh, so it. it uh, but I just, it's hard for me to watch wrestling now when like Brock Lesnar's fighting Mark Hunt in two weeks and it's real. Like it's hard for me to watch, you know, Seth Rollins against Dean Ambrose. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the opposite. Like I, I mean, I, um, 
I will sometimes I'll go back because you know like I just like the reason I do the roast battle or whatever I gotta get some evil out you know because it's it's a it's a fucking pain in the ass to be socially responsible all the time so sometimes I'll go back and I'll watch an, an Orton versus a Cactus Jack and Orton's in the thumbtacks and you know there's barbed wire and but I like matches like that because neither of them got they got really hurt but they didn't get injured like if a wrestler gets injured like there's one clip when Randy Orton gets thrown over the top rope and he lands right on his collar yeah, yeah. and I, I can't watch that stuff like UFC like there's always a chance that w- w- Anderson Silva like breaking oh. his leg and like I it's 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 so it's so brutal. It. And, but I I think people who like UFC I I you know I don't judge them and I think I respect UFC maybe even more than wrestling as the, the athletes and everything but um I like the flashiness I like that it's kind of safe you know to like the gray I mean I mean uh, they still get hurt but you know like they're trying they're not trying to hurt each other they're going to have real problems in a couple of years uh the first uh, with concussions and stuff. I mean, like you think the NFL players are loopy from the seventies and eighties, you know, uh, the, the unprotected chair shots to the head. Oh, oh my, oh my you, God. Wrestlers from the seventies. Yeah. 80s too. Oh, yeah. UFC is going to have that. Yeah, you're right. I think it's going to be really fucked up because I had uh Don Fry, Don Fry, the predator was maybe the creepiest nickname ever for any athlete. He he was my first celebrity guest <laughs> on Inappropriate Earl. <laughs> the, the legend, Don Fry. Wait, what's his name again? The, Don Fry. The, no, the Predator? Is the, that? Pre- the Predator. Well, I mean, Randy Orton was the Apex Predator. So, that, But I mean, this yeah. is like, you know, <laughs> Just that's the predator. wrestling. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is like real life. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, you know, he, he just got inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. Uh, but he uh, fought in the first couple of UFCs. Like, you know, those guys are going to have like massive problems because uh, they were literally picking guys off the street to like Don Fry was like an accomplished wrestler and uh, you know sometimes he wouldn't have an opponent and they there's a famous fight he had with Thomas Hernandez who was a taxi cab driver 400 pound taxi cab driver and he just looked great like he looked like a Bond villain <laughs> and, and Don Fry knocked him out cold in nine seconds oh geez he clearly won- he had no business being in this ring yeah uh, so I'd love to get a brain scan of Thomas Hernandez in 10 years uh, oh. and you know this is the UFC I would say probably like the first 10 uh, and this is it was they, it almost had like a face as a death. There was no regulation for the first few years, right? Not really. I mean, uh, I think everything was legal, but ball shots, and yeah. even that was like somewhat allowed. Like, yeah. And you had open weight classes, so you could have, uh, you know, I, I think that one of the funnier fights to look at visually was Emmanuel Yarbrough, who just died unfortunately. He was a seven hundred pound sumo wrestler. <laughs> I mean, 700 pounds. That's a lot. Uh, fighting Keith Hackney, who was probably my size. You know, maybe 6'1", oh, 205. Yeah. And you think there's no way this white guy's going to beat this guy. And Emmanuel Yarbrough threw a punch. He was so fat <laughs> that he lost his balance because Keith Hackney got out of the way. <laughs> and he fell down and Keith Hackney just pounded him on his head. <laughs> no gloves. Of course no not. Gloves. Why would there be? And so he just broke his hand on his head, but he beat him. My dad used to watch that stuff. But you like you couldn't. It was outlawed. Like you, you had to go to like Best Buy and buy the VHS tape like four months later. We, we know we we'd go to there's a there was a Vietnamese a VHS store where everything is was bootlegged, and they were all, at all those old UFCs right. like the first ten, and yeah I. I mean, I was like, how is this legal? It looks like they're killing each other. Like, for real. Like, there was an unregulated sport. Yeah. And that's why they thought ECW was real for a while. was because it was like, oh, you guys are like UFC. They were kind of... I mean, ECW was as real as you could get. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I think they even brought in Kurt Angle one. Yeah, and then they and then they had to get rid of him when... I mean, he left when they uh, crucified the Sandman. Yeah, and when Raven, kid. Yeah, when Raven... No, Raven. Raven. <laughs> the Sandman's kid was near Raven doing the, the the Jesus symbol, watching their dad get crucified, and Kurt Angle was like, all right, I'm getting the fuck out of here, you know? Yeah, so I think he said he went in the back to Paul Heyman and said, you use my image, you say I was here. <laughs> you know, I'm not down for this. Yeah. Uh, like, which would have been crazy to see Kurt Angle wrestle in that kind of an environment. Yeah. Uh, you know, he was, he was like a, a legit Olympic yeah. you know, guy. So uh, it's great to talk about comedy and wrestling with you. 
Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, no, no. This is, I mean, uh, I would think we're nearing the time where the recorder shuts off. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm not very technically savvy. Okay. But there is a point it, at, uh, we are at an hour and 45 minutes where the recorder, like, it's like a ghost. Oh, really? <laughs> shuts off. So I'm so paranoid. Maybe but. it's letting me know that I'm getting boring. No, is not at all. That, is that uh, <laughs> not, no, I can t see. I want to. I have these uh, weird theories about people who listen to podcasts. I find that after about an hour, most people will tune out. Uh, anything over an hour, it's like you're not boring at all. So uh, I think I want people to go. I want to hear Robin again. I want yeah. Robin to come back. Yeah. So, because, I mean, we barely talked about stand-up. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll talk a little bit about stand-up. I think we got about, I think we got about a six-minute window here. Sure, sure. Uh, like, my, uh, not idols, but influences were like, they weren't stand-ups, actually. They were like Archie Bunker, Carol O'Connor. Yeah. And uh, the irreverent humor of the Dean Martin roast, which, uh, I, outside of Don Rickles. Don I, Rickles, yeah. I don't know if any of them were stand-ups per se. Uh, like you, we talked about what offended me, or it has anything offended me. And like Don Rickles' album from '68, "Live at the Sands," it's only 38 minutes. I want everyone to buy this album. I, I think it's on iTunes, but uh, I don't get any money for this, <laughs> even though I did play golf with Larry Rickles uh, quite a bit when I was a baby. <laughs> Larry Rickles had the greatest golf shot I'd ever seen on the first hole, Bel Air Country Club. He literally shot 14 strokes before he got it up to the green, put it in the sand trap, 15 strokes, and he holes this shot from the sand. Oh, and, shit. Uh, for a nice first hole score of 16. <laughs> shot her around the world. <laughs> but Don Rickles' album, like, you know, he was saying some... What I, I actually prefer the seventies roast to the more current roast, because like Don Rickles would say some of the craziest fucking things without swearing. It was just more innuendos. Yeah. Like, you know, at this, uh, album live at the sands, I guess there was a black guy in front and, uh, he's like, Hey man, you're not going to bother my house. Come on in. Plenty of grits. <laughs> it's like, wow, that's crazy to say that in 68. Like, yeah. Uh, and then uh, there was a black guy in the back, and he's like, "Hey!" And this is right around the Watts riots. And, yeah. You know, he's like, "Hey!" To the Negro guy in the back, uh, have a good summer. <laughs> and it's like, "Wow, that's like it didn't offend me, but yeah. it's like, you know, wow." It's, but I like how he's doing it, where he's not saying "fuck." Yeah. Uh, uh, like, who are your influences? Um, well, before I get into influences, I want to say, like, I kind of agree with you. The first few years of the Comedy Central, when they just the Friars roast, I like those a lot more than the Comedy Central roast. Like when Jeff Ross was in the suit and he, I, the first joke that got me into roast was when he said, uh, Drew Carey is the comedy, what Mariah Carey is the comedy. Right. Such a simple, like, you know. I like that. It's so, I, I like that stuff, too. Um, my influence is, uh, um, when I was a kid, I watched, um, uh, a bigger and blacker. It was Chris Rock. I had HBO like illegally for some reason, and he was doing a joke about these white kids shooting up to school. They didn't even wait till three o'clock either, you know. Like, right. and I, I, I had never laughed that hard before in my life, and I didn't know it was possible to laugh that hard. So, I, Chris Rock, anything he did, I went back. I watched Bring the Pain. And then I, I listened to um, Chappelle's Killing Them Softly oh. for like over and over. I've listened to that special like 50 times. And then the special that, and I did, I did stand-up comedy one time, or I auditioned a couple of times in high school in 2004. I did the talent show and I won. I got first place. It was just stupid high school jokes. But I'm like, I can't do this for a living. And then I saw Louis C.K.'s um, Not Shoot Up. I watched Louis C.K.'s Shameless special. And that was the first special I saw where I'm like, I think I can do this. Right. He makes fun of himself. He's conversational. This is how I tell jokes. Um, and then Conan O'Brien was like my hero. So like those four. Um, but I would say now uh, I don't have any heroes. I don't look up to anybody. And I do that kind of on purpose because at some point they're going to disappoint me and I don't, and I, and they're human and they should. And I don't want to have such reverence for somebody that, you hear something about someone and you go, well, they can't know. I, Louis can't do that or not Chappelle or whatever. They're just people. And so like, I know that as corny as it sounds like my comedy's gotten a lot better that I am just going to be my own hero. And I have to be, 
I mean, I'm the I'm probably the best Vietnamese transgender lesbian comic in the world, right? Because there's what like two of us or How something. Many, well, there's I, well, I don't in the L.A. scene. There's one other transgender comic, right? but not 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 transgender and Asian, right? And and you know, I have a girlfriend, lesbian, and uh, I'm like. I, I'm. I have to figure out my own road. I can't follow the footsteps of any of these other people. Right, because you're like a, in a sense, a ground, uh, a groundbreaking. Uh, yeah. You're the first of uh, hopefully many. Yeah, but you know the thing about being first is that I think I'm. I think I'm really good, but I also accept that part of my appeal is that there's not really anyone like me. Like you know, you've you've there's there's probably a lot of funnier people that you haven't had on your show than I am, but they're all, they're not transgender Asian, you know? So, right. so, um, well, if, you, if they are out there, please. Uh, <laughs> no, okay. but you know what I mean? Like, so I know that's kind of a corny, but like I've, I've learned not to idolize people so much right? because it's too painful when they let you down. The, the closest I have to having a hero isn't a comedian. It's Daniel Bryan, the wrestler. He's at he, his elimination from the Royal Rumble in 2015 is actually what caused me to eventually come out as a transgender woman. Cause I was so heartbroken by right. it. And it's just such a, it's such a stupid story, but like I was so hard for three days, I canceled WWE network. And then one day I'm talking to, to Kate and I feel so stupid. And then, and then, uh, she, she's like, look, just say that you're sad about Daniel Bryan, you know, like, and I'm like, they don't like him cause he's not the way that they want him to look. Right. And then when I said that there's something hit me and about two days, three days later, I came out as a trans woman. Right. So that's the closest I have is Daniel Bryan. But I even try to like, shut that down a little bit because I don't want to find out that Daniel Bryan like has kitty porn or some shit later on. Well, he he's every, does, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. Earl. <laughs> he probably does. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I, I mean, I agree with you from the standpoint of like, I've gone through phases where I don't want to meet people I admire. It's like, what if they're a dick? Yeah. You know, like I grew up around OJ Simpson and he threw me the football as a kid. Like, yeah. How's he doing? Is he all right? I mean, he's worked more in the last <laughs> month than I have. I mean, that's fucking unbelievable. Uh, I mean, who never, who thought that a double murder would get you uh, sitcoms and yeah, the documentaries, America development <laughs> deals. Uh, but uh, but through roast paddle, you know, and we talk so much about it because it's so, uh, you know, to get to meet Dave Chappelle and have him be cool. Yeah. Like he was amazing to me and uh, meet Jim Carrey. And like Jim Carrey is probably the only one who I think ever really got the, my references I was doing because he came up to me in the parking lot and said, like, hey, Archie, where's Edith? Yeah. <laughs> like he got it instantly. And uh but, you know, to have the judges who are, you know, usually famous comics or whatever, like be, most, most, the, the only person through, through the almost three year run of Roast Battle that was kind of dicky, and I don't mind saying their name was Wanda Sykes. Oh, wow. Really? In Montreal last Damn, year. Damn, I didn't. She wasn't happy. She, she didn't want to be there for whatever reason. Wow. And she even said it. She's like, Jeff, I'm just here for you. Uh, you know, she was shitting on all the people battling. Oh, geez. Told Jack Knight, you're not funny. And Jack Knight's like amazing. Uh, you know, he's going to be a star. And it, it's like, why did you come here then? Like, and she hated me and Whitney. Yeah. This was at the time we were basically doing the house racist character. Uh, they called it the house haters, but you know, it's only yeah, you you know your character is really hard to pull off. It's tough. And and I I the thing is is that I I always want to make it clear when I a lot of people do your ironic racist and they they suck at it that um uh, i love your character and i want to can i tell you my favorite all in the family joke please because like all in the family like i i love those old sitcom jokes and i can't watch a full episode but some clips are great right. when edith goes like what do they say when they sneeze do you remember this and then archie goes what does who say edith and she was like the chinese do they say god bless you or buddha bless you and Archie goes like, oh, Jesus, Edith, the chinks just sneeze and say nothing. They can't speak any English. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just such a, <laughs> there's so much ignorance. And then, yeah. and then Meatloaf is just like, like why can't they say uh, Buddha bless you in English? Like, oh, the, the closest they say is like sayonara. He goes, that's Japanese. He goes, well, same thing. This is not the same thing. He's like, you're going to tell me you see a, a chink and a Jap, you're going to know the difference? He goes, yeah, you talk to them. You get to know them. He goes, yeah, which one of you used to chink and which one of you used to chink? And like, I, like, like I know I'm not supposed to like that stuff, and I don't like it when it's done poorly, but when it's done right, it's like, it's so, it's the funniest but, shit but, to I me. I mean, the writing on that show, was, especially the first couple seasons, were like, uh, just that episode, probably my favorite nine, 
my my favorite i mean it was nine minutes but like my favorite stand sitcom uh segment ever was the when sammy davis i didn't uh, see that one. Oh my god i know i know about it but i haven't seen it it's it's about nine minutes long and basically what happened was uh sammy davis left his uh briefcase in uh archie's cab so our, you know they have the briefcase at archie's house Sammy Davis has to go there to get it, and uh, it, it's the most well-written segment in sitcom history to me. I got to check it out. It's just, you know, Archie Davis, Archie Davis, Archie <laughs> Bunker, horribly racist, a buffoon, and Sammy Davis just breaks him down, and uh, there's just so many, like, uh, little, like, tags and punchlines that both guys are landing and uh like there's this one segment where uh they i forget what the line was but hey i'll drink to that and sammy davis takes a drink and he gives it to archie to drink and archie's about to drink it and then he stops he's like uh you know and the joke was i'm not drinking out of a black man's glass and it was just <laughs> but there's the facial expressions <laughs> on both guys <laughs> and uh you know Basically, Archie was like, you know, Sam, I'm not racist, you know. And it's just Ar uh, Sam was like, you know, Archie, I know, you know. Because when I walked in here, you could have called me a coon. You looked at me and you called me, and he says the N-word. Like, <laughs> you can see color. And it's just like, <laughs> now keep in mind, this is early 70s. Yeah. You had three networks. Yeah. CBS, NBC, ABC. That's it. Yeah. So you didn't have CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, uh, you know, DirecTV, 500 channels. So to pull off that scene in that time frame was just. Oh, there's one more now in that same vein. Do you mind if I share? No, it? please. George Jefferson was in one of the episodes and, and him and Archie were bonding over disliking an interracial couple right. like they both the wanted wedding. they both wanted the pure race. and so they, they're fighting and and the black woman and the, the the interracial couple is fighting and george jefferson goes like you see this is happens when you mix black and white next thing he's in a collar and you know, he actually says right. the word the n-word and then archie gets offended and he looks at edith and goes like can you listen to that i haven't used that word in three years yeah. <laughs> it's like, one of the funny, like what, a, what a thing to say on tv no i mean oh that i mean is <laughs> Another, like, I love that episode because uh, it's like, uh, you know, the white bartenders giving George Jefferson the, like, the good scotch. And Archie's like, hey, you finally got money to get the good stuff. <laughs> and it's like, I've always had money. And, you know, and, and it's just the uh, bartender. Was, like, that was just like. I study comedy, dude. Like, I, I, I mean, I, I talk shit a lot, but I study the shit out of every. But, I mean, that's like writing, like. I would love to have been in the writer's room of All in the Family those first few seasons where it's like, hey, let's say this. And like, there was that episode where uh, the sheriff from Blazing Saddles, Cleavon Little, who's like, uh, you know, I mean, Blazing Saddles is another podcast, but uh, he was robbing Archie Bunker's house. And for some reason, Edith called the house and Cleavon Little picks up the phone and Edith's like, who's this? And Cleavon Little, like, this is the. <laughs> mm, robbing your house right now and it's like you, you couldn't do that no, scene today it's you like, couldn't but just the fact that some writer said hey i got a funny idea what if this guy's robbing the house and eat it yeah. it's like but you know hey you know what to be fair there are some shows that are new that the carmichael show i don't know if you've seen that yeah no it's I a mean, modern day like all in the family yeah i mean it's, it's it's fantastic and it's from the opposite viewpoint oh of like yeah almost like a jefferson the Jefferson's type of, you know, view, like, this is and, how black people see it. And, and Archie is, like, the father, yeah. and the main character is, like, more of the meatloaf yeah. kind of character. There's no, I mean, like, I don't want to just talk about old shit. There's a lot of, like, new, darker shit. I think It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia is a very dark, yeah. very well-written show. Rick and Morty is a cartoon. It's the like, darkest show I've ever seen. So I think, Earl, I'm just saying, I think that they, they there are shows, like, that are so dark now that you wouldn't have been able to get away back then is all I'm saying. Oh, yeah. This I mean, different. South Park. South Park uh, and everything, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I, I think The Wire on HBO was... Uh, That's not a good comedy. Uh, What's well, not comedy. <laughs> I'm kidding. It could, well, it is if you're white. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, that was pretty uh, dark. Yeah. Uh, I do like Kurt Sutter. Uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, that's... It's my favorite show of all time. I think that show is... is a. I mean, they pushed so many buttons on that show. Are you kidding me? Larry David invites a, 
a con- like a child molester to a cedar because he was nice to him. <laughs> like <laughs> like it's, that show really like if you want to watch a, a, a guy that just still has the chops, Larry David is one of oh, my yeah, heroes. Oh yeah, he's awesome. You know what? I take back what I said. I think Larry David is what I strive to be in my career. It, it's, it's I'm kind of agoraphobic. I don't like to go out. Larry David doesn't really like to. But when he's out, people are excited. So in the meantime, I'm at home. I'm writing stuff because right. I, I don't really like talking to people. I don't really like going out. Like if I can have Larry David's career, I'll be happy. I just like how he had such stage fright or has stage fright that they said he would sometimes go up to a comedy <laughs> club and obviously they wanted him on. He'd get on right away, he'd go on stage, skip in the room and go, I don't think no, so. No, I don't think so and leave. <laughs> but, I felt like doing that so many times. <laughs> You know, you had some shitty open mic and, or, you know, you're at the improv and you're like, oh, this crowd's not going to dig me. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jason Rouse, great uh, Canadian comic, he got me a spot at the improv once. And I just, as soon as I walked up, I knew the crowd wasn't into me. It just, it's weird. It's just a vibe. And I, you know, I hammered it out. And it, yeah. But I was like, I wish I had the balls to go, eh, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't think so. I got happens to me a lot too. So. <laughs> Well, Robin, uh, this is, uh, let me see here. We are, uh, oh yeah, we're, we're, uh, stretching the two, we're straight. It hasn't shut off yet, but I just, I'm, I'm r- was raised by a Jewish mom. So okay. my paranoia is at all time highs. Where can people find you on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook? Ro- Robin Tran zero four on Twitter, uh, July 9th. Uh, my girlfriend and I are doing our third unconventional lesbian show at the karma lounge at 7 PM. Uh, it's a it's a comedy and storytelling show. We come, we each do like a half hour set, and then we come together at the end and tell our story of how we got together. No, that's so on Twitter. It's Robin Tran O four zero four zero four not yeah. O not O zero four. And uh, fa- do you do the Facebook? I mean, like yeah, personal. Uh, uh, no, I have a Facebook. I mean, it just like um a fa- like um Google me. I don't know what my Facebook. Okay, uh, well, because I'm sure there's a lot of Robin Trans. Uh, yeah. But uh, go on, uh, if you want to uh, find Robin on Facebook, go on my uh, page and uh, look her up on my friends. That's, I guess, might be the easiest way. Are you, do you uh, do Instagram? Yeah. Um, I think that's also Robin Tran 4 Okay. And uh, our anonymous guest, do you want to plug out do your... Do you want to plug uh, anything, Andrew? Oh, I'm sorry. I mean... Uh, per- no, it's fine. Do you want to plug your Twitter? Yeah. No, it's good. I'm just a taxi driver for the day, so... But give, give him your Twitter. I want, we have a third person here. T- tell him who you are first. How's it going? I'm uh, Andrew Pupa. I'm just another comic from the area. And uh, my Twitter and everything's just my name, Andrew Pupa. Spell it, though. Uh, P-U-P-A. So, uh, yeah, Andrew is a funny comic. He also doubles as uh, Robin's Uber today. <laughs> uh, I'm a piece of shit. No, no, not at all. I mean, <laughs> listen, this is the hardest part of this podcast is getting people to come down. Uh, you know, because it is, uh, you know, you live in Garden Grove. Uh, around there. Around, Orange right, County. Like, yeah. Right. So I yeah. didn't mean to, like, say where you Yeah, live, don't worry. Like, My address is. Right. No. I do that all the time. Like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm on Larrabee in West Hollywood. Uh <laughs> So uh, I've had people like walking down the street when I have my dog. I split my dog with the ex uh, and they're like, oh, Earl, you, you really do live on Larrabee. And it's like, who are you? He's like, oh, we listen to your podcast. I'm like, oh, cool. Uh, so, uh, you, know, I, you know, I'm a pretty trusting person, although someone just did steal my favorite pair of hockey clubs downstairs. Uh, it was Pride Weekend last week. Uh, you know, it was wildness in this neighborhood. Uh, <laughs> but I know on Twitter today there was heterosexual Pride Day. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Crazy. I, yeah that's crazi. Yeah, it's crazy. They've been struggling their whole lives. I'm you know? assuming that's on Pico. Uh, <laughs> definitely not going to be on Santa Monica. <laughs> but uh, i got to go, uh, go uh, hopefully, and catch the last few minutes of that parade. But, uh, guys, uh, Robin Trans, she's uh, awesome. And, uh, you know, we broke it down. But she could come back and we'll get more into stand up and shit. Uh, you know, uh, you know, like I said, I want you to want more from Robin, and uh, you know, hopefully, it's a good uh, prelim. And then Roast Battle, follow her on Roast Battle. She's a killer. And uh, you know, Comedy Central, uh, July twenty fourth, the Road to Roast Battle airs. Uh, it's a compilation of the shows from Austin, the Belly Room, and in, in the uh, L.A. Comedy Store, Chicago, and New York. Uh, you know, you may see Daddy on that. And then uh, Montreal, who knows? I'm me and my role in roast battle in Montreal. I'm a lot like Sting. The only thing for sure is nothing's for sure. So, uh, and uh, by the way, uh, 91, uh, go on WWE Network, uh, go on to watch a 91 Capital Combat 
when uh, my figurine I am staring at right now of RoboCop saved staying from the dreaded four horsemen <laughs> one of the great bumbles and uh you know we don't have the time to truly get into it but real fast yes and say under a minute what's your favorite botched shock, shock master absolutely it has to be Sting was involved in that Sting was involved in that it still makes kate laugh his stormtrooper helmet. Yeah, we can talk about this for an hour. So I don't. Yeah, get, I mean, uh, that's, is the best. Uh, it's funny that my favorite wrestlers stink. Yeah, my favorite two botched uh, storylines or uh, parts of storylines involve Sting. Uh, Shockmaster uh, <laughs> is well done. Please, just WCW Shockmaster. Yeah, basically they did a dry run in the afternoon. It all worked out, and someone put a two by four. <laughs> not telling anyone <laughs> so the shock master comes out trips over the two by four his star wars helmet goes flying off we all know who it is uh, it's tugboat it's tugboat and then he but you hear uh, i think it was ole anderson in the back yep. talking so it's like and you don't see tugboat's lips moving so it's clearly ole anderson doesn't know what's going on stings laughing Lex Luger's overacting to try and cover up from him laughing. I think Ric Flair says, oh, my God, he fucking fell. Yeah. I think one of them says and that. And I think you hear, like, uh, Booker T laughing. Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, with Sting in Capital Combat, you know, it's RoboCop, huge movie in 87. And then I think the sequel was uh, 89, 90. So, it was, you know, they love to get those cross promotions. And so Sting was locked in a cage by the Four Horsemen. And they thought, oh, well, we'll have RoboCop come unlock the cage sting beats up the four horsemen but what they didn't take into account this is when pay-per-views were like <laughs> time limits like yeah. literally they had to get out by you know nine o'clock uh they didn't figure out that robocop if you ever heard peter weller talk about how hard that movie was to film because he couldn't fucking move in it like you literally have to take <laughs> penguin steps because the costume is bulky that's the reason he got the part <laughs> Because he's the only guy to fit into the fucking costume. <laughs> the original RoboCop was Michael Ironside, who was the mean drill sergeant in Top Gun. He's been tons of things. He was too big. He couldn't fit into the costume, which it all worked out. Although I liked RoboCop 3 with Robert John Burke in it, but that's like the, you talk about Kiss in the 80s and rest, uh, WC, WWE in the early 90s. RoboCop 3 is like... So it took RoboCop like literally 20 minutes to walk from the entrance ramp to save Sting. I don't even think the end of the pay-per-view aired, but uh, Capital Combat, uh, WWE Network, I don't get any money uh, from that, nine bucks. But uh, this has been inappropriate, Earl. Uh, this is the second... Last week we did two hours with Moan Red. We just hit the two hour mark. This is an inappropriate Earl first. Two two hour podcasts back back to back. Uh Robin Tran's the best. Uh killer roaster, red killer comic. Uh she's uh got a lot of shows. Where do you uh put most of your shows up? Like Twitter? Like hey I'm Yeah. Twitter so. and Facebook. If you if if you follow me on Twitter, I'll put them all up and everything. So yeah, follow her on Twitter mainly, Robin Tran04, uh Instagram as well. Look her up on my Facebook. Oh, and I have an album out called Santa Doesn't Like Every Kid. You can just look it up. On iTunes? On YouTube. Oh, so it's but so they can't buy it. You just, they can buy it. I, I'll have a link up and everything. Oh, too. so go seriously. Just uh, just watch it for free, and then if you want to buy it, you can just tweet me, and I'll let you have a link for it. And Robin didn't ask me to do this. You know, it's all about love. You know, uh, uh, Keith Carey's got a super funny album out. Uh, follow him, Connor and Joe Dosh Mean Boys podcast. Uh, you know, I took my comedy album down off of iTunes because I uh, I signed up through TuneCore, and they were fucking very Enron accounting. Uh, you know, and and plus I had the recorder facing the wrong way, so it didn't sound <laughs> that good. I mean, '80s metal bands have recorded better live albums than I did because <laughs> I I did it with a Zoom recorder like I'm using now. But I was so I'm so bad with technology. I had the, <laughs> the mic <laughs> facing me. Oh no! So I sound amazing. Oh yeah! I mean, it sounds as good as any comedy album Chris Rock's put out. Yeah. In terms of the sound, but then the audience like the mic's facing me so it's a, it's like, yeah muted laughter it's like those yeah. fucking bill hicks cds that he would be performing in front of 20 people like so <laughs> by the way a big sh a quick shout out to historical roast we did the historical roast last night at the comedy store we also did it a week ago where i played the ultimate warrior oh uh, have you done that yet no i haven't done uh, that. eddie firth does it it's they roast dead celebrities 
So like last night, uh, it was uh, dead comics roasting each other. Oh, that's great. Uh, like I was Lenny Bruce. Uh, Jay Light was Mitch Hedberg. Uh, Connor was George Carlin. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, Marino was Kennison. Uh, Jen Sturger killed it as uh, Joan Rivers. Kim Congdon was Phyllis Diller. Oh, that's so great. Uh, and uh, Pat Reagan uh, was Andy Kaufman. <laughs> and he killed. Like everyone did amazing i mean kim kong is black and she channeled uh phyllis diller like he, wow he like, which is impressive if you don't look like the comedian yeah uh so historical roast uh, follow them on twitter because they've got some great shows coming up i think uh they did uh well we did macho man last week which was fun um and then they do uh, i think they did like napoleon it's, it's, so it's a fun uh show they do and then uh inappropriate earl soundcloud and itunes we're going to sign out before the recorder shuts off at Earl Skakel on Twitter and Instagram. Leave a fucking review on iTunes. <laughs> Joe Rogan has like 10,000 fucking reviews. I've got like a hundred and, but, but you got to play it cool though. Don't say this is the greatest comic of all time or this podcast is 10 times better than Marin's. It's, it's not believable. <laughs> Just say, Hey, and if you don't like it, say something, I'll leave it up. Cause I'm Jewish and I come from money. I don't give a fuck. <laughs>